Then I get to one that's like, Wu talks so annoying or whatever. And then I'm just mad and I'm like, I saw more than one. Oh, well, you. <laughs> I don't think I'm at the point where I can give up what you're giving up. I think you're becoming more like Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, God. I am going to leave the podcast for a bit. This is unlike the last time where I had a nuclear meltdown. And I came on here to tell you I'm leaving. We've had the conversation of what's the best weapon of all liquor bottles. Oh, dude, Hennessy this is, a good is one. number one. Wait, why does Hennessy make you angry? Because what's, what's, it, it's more like it's what it is, is Hennessy is like dark liquor, very strong that people are drinking just to flex. They don't even like it. So it's like it just creates a violent scenario. Well, so they drink. There's club. nothing inherently in Hennessy that makes you more violent. Oh, but do you, but is there is it not true uh, from from the bar science guy? Is it not true that darker liquors like hit you harder or strong get you drunk? It's, like it's, it's a lot of like whiskeys are just higher proof overall, and then because like darker liquors have more flavor, you can make it stronger and still make it like a ah. vodka that's fifty percent just tastes like rubbing alcohol versus whiskey that's fifty percent still tastes like whiskey. Mm. So that's why it's usually higher proof. But Hennessy is forty flat, I believe. I used to call Jailer or Sailor Jerry's Jailer Series because it would turn me backwards. <laughs> Every time I drank, every time it was straight up teleportation juice, I'd wake up the next day in college and just have no idea. And it'd be the uh, wildest nights. You know what? You know what else is a good weapon? Like Belvedere or Grey Goose. Those are like sabers. You know what I'm saying? If they oh, were like smooth. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Sabers. Because the handle's long. The neck is long for oh. grip. And then <laughs> Who are we fighting? And then, and then, the, anybody? <laughs> and then the bottle is long. So you got a lot of like smacking range. The Ooh. Hennessy Club, though, it's like a... A mace. Yeah, it's a mace. Yeah. So, yeah. What other bottle would be good? As a weapon? Uh, Crown Royal, because that's just strong. Crown Royal or Grand Marnier, same, same. Oh, yeah, Crown Royal, no, because there's no handle. You need handle. I'd say that's like a good, like, throwing... Like f- or tie it at the end of a rope. And yeah, it's you're like just a dodgeball. Swinging ball. that thing. Yeah. Yeah. What else is a good bottle? What's a like weapon? your... Uh, Casamigos is, pretty, is not bad. It's inferior to Grey Goose and Belvedere. So, if you were going for the saber option, you should choose one of those, though. What about Casa Azul? Terrible. Nah, not, not a good too, handle. Not a, you can't grip that awkward, thing. Awkward, yeah, awkward grip. You'll lose it after one good swing, basically. Yeah. It's something you need. Oh, uh, what makes a good weapon is if it will remain in your hand after clubbing someone to death. And if, you know, if you just want, <laughs> damn, if you just want, like, a different, unique-looking one, a Jack Daniels, it's square. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jack, Jack Daniels, Daniels is style points. Jack yeah. This would be good if you break it off, and then it's a sharp. No, no, because of the corners, if you smack somebody with right in the corner, yeah, it's, the it's like a dent edge. into their skull. Yeah. Why are we doing this to people? Weapon. I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining like you go to the liquor store to pick up your weapons and you have like <laughs> buzz balls are like grenades. They're just like acid grenades. Nah, bro, be- buzz balls is like useless. You you peel it and throw it in someone's eyes. That's just like coolant. You can do that for anything. Coolant. You can do that for anything. Yeah, anyway. but it's just, you know, it's in a, in a tennis ball. You could really throw it. With okay, me. let's God, not talk about people. We're Fine. About All right. People. Harming them close to them losing their life. I was talking about defending myself. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Under the Influence. My name is Esther. My name is Esther. My name is Esther. My name is Vitrap. My name is Vitrap. My name is Vitrap. <laughs> <laughs> Today we have a very special episode. <clears throat> I'll be talking on it uh, because it's going to be around a lot of mental health. We also have a lot of announcements. Oh, yeah. number one, this coming after the bay. This coming out after. Wait, the hold bay. on. But we're sponsored by Nectar, Nectar Hard Seltzer. Seltzer. Unique, Unique Asian, Asian flavors and no weird, weird aftertaste. aftertaste. Guess what? 50 Safeways coming your way. Bay Area. We were just up there, I think. Yeah. And 50 Fred Myers in Washington. Hell yeah. More more stores of the new pack. In, uh, the new pack is all over more Texas stores. and HEB. And we got some crazy news for Hawaii coming very soon. The craziest. New drink innovation. You guys are getting it first, and a really crazy store. That's a big ass hint. And so. a really crazy store. Really crazy store. Oh yeah. yeah. Asian moms love this store. See Asian. if you could guess. Guess yep. in the comments. Uh-huh. And Is that okay. It's, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, and it's you get a lot of really good deals. A lot uh, of deals. Mm. I know what it is. A lot of. 
There's money back in your pocket. She said, ah, oh, I know what it is. Like, we didn't tell her before. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. But I was just like, oh, wait, what, what else? What, what, other, what other new store? I was uh, thinking like Toys R Us or something. And I was like, that's crazy. Toys R Us? <laughs> that's, that's, you that you do not really, get deals like, at Toys really R Us. Crazy. We now have alcohol at Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, anyways, we got to get in today's episode. And we are well, just going to rip the bandaid route. Oh. We're not going to talk about the studio? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the last day in this studio. I know you guys hate my living room. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry that I built it with my own hands overnight to appease you. Wait, why do they hate it? I what do they know. say? I mean, to be, it's just too casual. Like, it's like this you couch that does not blend in with the rest of the furniture. There's literally toilet paper over there. There's like that random the window in the shit. back. This ugly ass window with blinds that don't block out any <laughs> light right ugly there. Ugly ass window. I have to start wearing an eye mask to sleep because of that bum ass blinds. Damn. Oh. They don't block shit. And then we got Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Who At least I tried over there. Look how pretty that looks. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, uh, and then we just got <laughs> like little. What is this? But I understand Miles why you hate least. it. But yeah, don't worry. We're, uh, we're moving into a new set. So by the next episode, we should be in there. We'll yes, be in it'll set. be very nice. We and built it with our own two hands. Building it tomorrow. But by the time you see this, it's built. And then yes. uh, and it's in Jester's garage. Yep. Oh, it feels great that I could just say those things. Yo, what the f man? Yeah, you you're gassy today, yeah, man. You're, you're gross. I have acid reflux. Every time I eat, I burp like this. Is acid reflux burping or throwing up? It's, uh, it's like like it's you're like, bloated and oh, like okay. you get like you get like your stomach acids in your throat when you Dude, burp. Dude, yeah. I thought acid reflux was a white person disease. I don't know too many Asians for that. Oh, it's a like corn diet. Yep. No, I used to have acid reflux too. It's uh, when you don't chew and you're just like stuffing everything in your mouth. You can also get that. I also mm. feel like it's more of an Amer like a Western food disease, mm. like Greasy America. Food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like think of American like garbage quality food. Like that's. I also why think you I, it's because I destroy my f intestines with spicy food. Yeah, yeah. oh, that's, that's a true. big factor too. Oh, spicy food. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. But also, every time I would go to like, when it, where I went to college, it was a very like, bumble f white town, right? And what so was like, the name of the town? New Paltz, New York. So New Paltz? New Paltz. Okay. So it's a very hippie. It's like half like extreme hippie and then half like middle America type vibe. It's upstate New York. And um, every time I would eat at, like at school for a while, like I lived off campus, but I would eat like the foods in town, right? Immediate heartburn and acid reflux because like the <laughs> food's so quality. No, but it's but like, and everyone's fat. You know what I'm saying? Everyone that's a local is fat because like if you eat out, you're, it's like 4,000 calories a meal. I also realized that you guys all eat really fast. Yeah, I and eat That's a fast. horrible thing to do. That's why I eat really slow and Jeremy always shits on, on me. I shit on her. Yeah, she, he, he double shits on I, I eat slow. Really? Yeah. But yeah, I mean. No, I eat very fast. If, you, if you're just eating like that and you're not chewing enough, mm -hmm. it will, it's just not going to digest that's, well. But sometimes I'm like, I can't chew more. It's like, like yeah. what? Like the food is <laughs> broken up. I'm just. And for me, it was like back in juvie. Like, if you didn't eat your food fast enough, someone was taking it. So really? they would literally take it off your oh, yeah. plate. No, no, no. Not like the other kids would be like, "You're not gonna finish that." Give me. And I was 12, so I was always getting my food taken. Damn. But uh, and then my and then I went to work at a Korean restaurant. There was like, if you don't finish in five minutes, you're not eating. So then it's like, just inhale <laughs> that cartoon <shit>. style. <laughs> <laughs> my shit never stuck with me for some reason. My my pops used to beat me. Cause I ate slow, and then I just because you were to rebel. Why do you eat? Why do you beep someone out for eating slow? That just doesn't make well, sense. Like in, let his, them in his reasoning, it was because he said you eat like a woman, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> no way. And then he Yo, would beat me. The beating part's not funny, but your pop's kind of funny. I see. What, that's hilarious. No, it's not. And then I remember asshole. one time he was like, "What have you? What have you go off into war? You can't eat like this." I'm like. I don't want to go to yeah. war. <laughs> that, that's probably why all the Korean <laughs> that worked at that restaurant would force me to eat fast because they all went to the military. Do you think your pops had like a, like, do you think he was on a spectrum? Of oh. autism? <laughs> maybe like, of like autistic? borderline no, personality. Outside of, me, outside of mental illness, do you think he was like, uh, maybe like, like bipolar or like some kind of like diagnosis? Maybe PTSD. Oh, probably. Maybe, maybe also, what's the schizophrenic? Like crazy? I would not be surprised if he had the same problems I have. I'm, Pass, I'm dead ass. Down, yeah. Just, yeah. I don't think he ever got the help that I got, yeah. or the even the the realizations that I have. Yeah, because like we he, live in a different like. Growing up, uh, my generation is like we talk about this, and I I took the time to every night look up like literally I used to type in what's wrong with me, and I would <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you so guys I've done cry a lot of work. on the camera. 
I don't think he has. When you would type <clears throat> what's wrong with me, like what was coming up, just Google articles or like, are you depressed? Or? Most of, yeah. And then I would go into it more like, I do this, so blah, blah, blah. Reddit was a, a big help. And uh, there was this other website. It's like Ask Quora. Q- oh, Q- yeah, Quora. Yeah. I used to get Quora. a lot of answers from that. Dude, Quora, for some reason, I have it like alert sent to my one of my emails. <laughs> and it's the why. I actually wanted to start a segment. Like, this is the Quora, Quora question of the week. They are wild now mm-hmm. on there. And I think some people now know it's like a fun way to try to go viral. But some of the comments are like, okay, whether or not this is fake, like this is like... This is the insane. Fact that you came up with this is crazy. Yeah, yeah it's the, the story. It's super entertaining, that website. Interesting. Yeah, but that's where I got a lot of, a lot of my answers from. Interesting. And it shaped ah. you into this? Into, into yeah, into, into who I am today. <laughs> Cancel Cure. <laughs> Cancel that shit. Do you, still, do you still use it? Nah. Uh, When's the last time? What's the last thing you looked up on it, you think? On that or like just on Reddit in general? Reddit, in general. yeah, well, one of those, I guess. It's been it's been a while. Just because I feel like now in in this stage of life, it's not so much as like what's wrong with me. It's more like I know what's wrong with me. How do I go about trying to change and fix it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you say that? Um, what would you say has been the absolute number one most helpful thing outside of this podcast? <laughs> As of recently, Jim. Yeah. Well, damn. Well, you could you could th- throw the podcast in there. Is it the podcast? No, he said that before. He uh, was like, "This well, the is the podcast." Really when you say podcast, I'm, I assume you're talking about like friends, like yeah, yeah, yeah you talking, guys, like yeah. everybody else. Yeah, other that's the biggest help for sure. But um, the gym, mm. outside forces, external forces, the gym for sure. Uh, traveling, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like just experiences, new experiences that allowed me to kind of see there was a whole another life out there than what I was shown. Uh, eating food, like eating three meals a day. Yeah, yeah, your body has nutrients finally. Damn, wild. I really want the gym to be my healing sanctuary, but it's very hard. Why, why is it so hard? I mean, first of all, getting there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, I'm, I'm actually curious. Like, Yeah, no, it's so hard. I get, is- okay. Well, most recently I went, when did I go? Jeremy? Monday. It was it Monday? Yeah. And that's the last time I went? Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday? It is now Friday oh, okay. for, for reference. Whoa. I missed a couple of days, huh? Just two. Just yeah. two or three. Can okay, you tell so, them why you went? Yeah. Okay. Well, I went because my friend's ex-boyfriend works there and I wanted to see what he was up to. What so, the fuck? So you didn't even go to work out. I did work out, but there's like you there's like a spot. Hey, yeah. listen here, buddy. I'm a good friend. There's did a, she there's ask a, you or did you go on your own accord? No, you I just wanted the tea. I just, That's I, crazy. <laughs> she loves tea Yo. that much. She loves tea that Unprompted, much. Unprompted, you stalked this man. <laughs> hey, she loves tea so much it made her go to the gym. <laughs> I was like, holy no, but you, you won't, yeah. you won't believe, Okay, so there's two stories, okay? okay? One story is where they do like weightlifting and stuff and like all the bodybuilders. The second floor is more so like, like treadmills and like yoga, you know? Usually I'm upstairs because I just walk, you know, because whatever. But then I had to be downstairs that time because he was downstairs. That's where you belong. You need to be hitting those Olympic lifts. Like. <laughs> Dude, I got buff. I was literally, you know how usually uh, it, where the dumbbells are, yeah. there's like a huge mirror. Mm-hmm. So I'm over here doing this <laughs> while looking in the mirror so I could check out the guy. You know what I mean? But dude, I was there for a long time doing the same workouts. I was doing this for like 30 four, minutes. Four hour workout. Literally. And then, yeah. And then the only other thing I knew how to do was, you know, one of those things where you push up the thing. The leg press. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, that's, th- that's th- those are the only things I knew how to she do. Did biceps and quads. <laughs> for, for a whole hour. That's crazy. For a whole hour. Whatever had the best mirror position to spy on. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's like, what are you even working out today? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. that's so that's did it. did you learn anything? Was it a worthwhile trip? No, I oh. couldn't find him. <laughs> you couldn't see him? But he wasn't there. I was I was looking in the Wait, office. He, you said he works there? Yeah, he works there. Uh, but I did see the girl. Oh, that he's cheating on. Not cheating. I can't. We can't clip this, okay? We can't. Okay. We can't. You guys drink hard seltzer? We do. Yeah, we do. But most of them are gross. We are. We got that weird aftertaste. Yeah. Ours is very, very clean Asian flavors, which no one's doing. Okay. Yeah. First one, Asian pear. Did you say Asian hair? Asian pear. Oh. Asian I got Asian hair. I was going to say, I'm like... <laughs> 
Wow, that's really actually good. Really good. You like it? I'm really picky. Really? What do you I normally like drink? This one's lychee. None. I used to drink the fruit punch Trulies, and then eventually I was like, okay, they're gross. Got over yeah. It. yeah. There you go. I'm sure you hear the pear is really good. Pear and lychee are top two by yeah. far. Well, I'm appreciate you guys trying. It was really good. Yeah. Actually, we will take, we will take this. Hey, you'll take a box? Absolutely. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, do you mind if I use your reactions? No, I don't mind. Great. Uh, I would have been gayer if I was just like... <laughs> oh, is it on? <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> okay, so, other than that, do you want to start going to the gym? I, I get confused between all your stories. Yes, I, I, I do, but then it's just like, I don't know if it's helping me. You don't know if the gym is helping you. Helping you in what sense? I don't know, losing weight. I just keep getting fatter. That's because you go and to I fucking realize. spy on someone for an hour instead of actually You're focusing. A- What's up, the, the the pink cat detective? <laughs> pink, the pink, pink panther? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> pink cat detective. <laughs> okay, no, but I know. Okay, so I, I was a little like down because I realized that I was gaining weight. Mm. And like my stomach just swelled up like where to the point where I thought I was Maybe pregnant. Maybe you're pregnant. Yeah, but the fuck, you're still my joke. Uh, That's not a joke. Well, you could be. Well, anyways, no. We've I, never done it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You've never done it? Yeah, she said uh, we're, we're supposed to wait. Till when? Till marriage. But didn't you say you don't want to get married? Well, I guess he ain't <laughs> never getting any. Damn. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> anyways, My no. brother, are you okay? I found oh, no. out. I was doing some research, right? And it was, and, and, and dude, I was like, it sucks because I want to wear, you know, my cute clothes that I bought and I, none of them fit. And I realized after re- – why are you laughing I'm at sorry. this? I'm trying to be vulnerable here. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, – and then I was researching and uh, I found out that I have an ovarian cyst. Oh, shit. Oh, really? Yeah, from, from an IUD, right? From the IUD. And then, and then it caused my stomach to, like, swell and bloat. Oh. And, Wait, and it, like, I have, like, constant, like, kind of weird cramping pain. On the lower area, uh-huh. and my stomach could literally stretch all the way like right here. You can, you can whip that out right now. Well, you don't want to. Oh, that's okay. I'll post it on my TikTok. I thought, it's I funny, thought you actually. got a. I thought you got surgery for that last year. Surgery? No, I got. I just got an IUD in there. No, no, she got the IUD implanted. I'm assuming. Did you not but get now surgery? Now it's causing an issue for something. Last no, year, so she had a fibroid. Oh, oh. fibroid. Yes. And then what they're saying is, if you cut it out, it'll grow back. Yeah. Like, so, so I didn't get the it. Best what way the is a fibroid. Uh, it's, it's supposed a- to be like a non-cancerous tumor. Mm. In your, on your uterus. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh. So you had a whole different t- like thing on your uterus. Yeah. And now you have another one. Damn, you a got some girl problems. A cyst. I have woman problems, dude. It's not easy being a woman. We never I think said it this was. is the compound effect of your diet so from you previous afraid. years. <laughs> no, you know what's crazy, too? I started realizing that I was getting fatter once I stopped eating tahini. Maybe. Just maybe the sodium from the tahini is wiping out all cysts and all liquids in my body I that makes highly, me skinny. I highly, highly doubt that it's the lack of tahini. I don't know. Diet. Doctors that watch this, let me know. <laughs> doctors watching this. Yeah, imagine there's a doctor watching this. Hey, if you're a doctor that watches our show, please comment down below. Make yourself known. We're, we're about to be doctors, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, CDG, Ian let us know that CDG came out with lab coats. Yeah, so, so we're I'm gonna buying buy one. I'm making the health videos in the lab coat. People are going to be like, what are your credentials? I'm like, CDG, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This oh, drip I, is my credential. Cool doctor garment. Wait, I actually do have a, a, vid, uh, a video. Like, I'll show you how. Of your stomach? Yeah. Ugh. I mean, it doesn't look- does it, is it going to freak me out? No. You think my stomach would freak you out? Okay. Yeah, if you're talking about there's like a... Si- <laughs> <laughs> fuck? First of all, Jeremy freaked me out more than your stomach. <laughs> uh, bro, send me that video. No, do not send okay. this to anybody. Wait, I was going to post this all on right, TikTok. Hey, if you're going to send that video... No, you can post it on... No, 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 no. Oh, do on- not post it on TikTok. No, no, no. Post it up here. Hey, if you're, up here. No, no, no. If you're hey, gonna it's send for that, the business, man. Yeah, if you're going to send that video, then I got to tell your story today. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Can we Dude, please? that's just going to ruin our relationship. No, you want that to happen? That's no, more funny to me. I'd take it as a joke. Uh, can we? No. Fine, fine whatever. Fine. Oh, no, no. She no, said no. yes. Yeah, no. I already said no, but you keep asking. So no, I'm no, going to no, say no, yes right now, and no, then no, you I'm can get your it. ass beat later. No, no, no. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to. I'll just ask you about the gym, man. Like, yeah, I'm trying yeah, to yeah, yeah. the gym? I'm trying to get a good friend. This got pulled away so No, okay. So then, so then. Okay, I went to the gym and I was work. I started working out. It's been a week. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's been a week, and I still got fatter. And now I just don't want to no, go. You went one time in no. a week. No, twice. 
since last Friday, how many times have you been? Last Friday. Yeah. But you know, Twice? like all the you're doing everything with like correct form. You're like, like sets and everything. Like that don't even matter as much. Just go. Put yourself in yeah, the gym. Yeah, that ass. Yeah. I, 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 the I mean, hardest, I, the hardest part is literally getting into the gym. That is the hardest part. Apparently, it's true. It is. The door is very heavy. <laughs> she, she drives all the way to the gym. Ah, oh. <laughs> the door. Oh. She's not pulling kidding. the push door. She's like, ah, oh. it's a I sign. Can't open it. Got to close go. today. Somebody comes and opens it for her. She's like, no, 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 too late. <laughs> what is your? Well, I guess in your in your sense, it would be for health, right? Because you're trying to get vanity. Skinnier. Vanity, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For health. I mean, come on. I never, I never cared about the gym for health, but it's like. <laughs> It's, for vanity. It's, it's essential for my mental health. So that's why I go. And that's why I found the motivation. The mental health is okay. Yeah. Just the the, the vanity piece eventually becomes for health. Because you're yeah. like, oh, I like the way I look and I feel. And then healthy, you're like, oh, yeah. how do I like keep this feel going? Good, look good. Yeah. Okay, look but good, feel why good. is it that every single gym rat I know is very has has the worst body dysmorphia? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, like, of course. Like, it's like... Oh. It, Tristan's laughing. Yeah. By Not the way, bad. Tristan is like a bodybuilder. Yeah, you have bodies this morning, Tristan? Yeah, of course. There's really? like this famous bodybuilder saying that it's like the first day you start lifting is the day that you will always be small. Yep. That's crazy. So like, why why start? <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I'm hearing hey, right now. I'm, I'm sorry. The if body, you guys... Because the body dysmorphia is now now is at least better than it was before. Yeah. Yeah, also, at least really? I'm jacked thinking I'm skinny. Also, yeah. also, <laughs> also, people, um, Photoshop really people up because there's yeah. these people with these crazy physiques and On they Instagram do a good job and they're yeah. also like saying they're natty when they're not yep. Yep, yep, so yep. there's a lot of just like misinformation that would like the trick steroids people. is fucked up yeah. yeah the uh social media is the, wait the they photoshop up like their muscles or yeah, something or they'll make themselves look more like a triangle in their waist just more they'll just oh, like they'll yeah. just tone Angles. themselves more yeah that's you you're probably the problem it's true yeah. I, i'm sorry no sometimes i i am actually not that fat but in the picture i do look like that because i'm bloated so i'm just like oh let me just Put, put myself back to how I actually look. That's actually, yeah, maybe we should cut. You don't want that out there. Im imagine, imagine I was just like, That's hey, like, I used to be 175, so I'm going to just enlarge in everything to the what no, I look like. No, 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 not like that. Not like that. I get People will tear your ass up if you, for what? That you get photoshopping Photoshop? your pictures for little girls to see. They will tear oh, your ass up. No, everyone really? They, they, no, no, everyone. Yeah. I'm yeah, not going to, honestly, I stand by this. Everyone, Every not single everyone. girl photoshops. 80% of, 80 of people yeah. will Photoshop or use filters. And I'm just like, sure. you know what? Yeah. Fine. Come on. Even Every if, you, when you go on TikTok too, or actually Instagram stories, filters. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't it's see, the worst. I don't see, I almost never see girls not I've never use seen a girl not Second, use yep. TikToks, there's filters as well. Agreed. I use all of them. TikTok girls Live, did you know TikTok Live auto puts yes. a filter? Yes. Mm -hmm. It has an yes. auto. Hey, this is for y'all out there. Everyone, I remember when I used to go live on TikTok more often, people would always be like, holy shit, your skin, like, how did you get your skin so beautiful? Skincare routine, please. And I'm like, my skin's good, but like this is a filter. Like, it like I'm like, it yeah, yeah. I'm like, I look point. perfect in this light, and I didn't even add this filter. TikTok auto put this on. Like, I can't even. I don't even know how to take it off. Yeah. So, just be yep. wary. You're gonna see beautiful people all the time online, and sometimes it's not even their choice for that filter. Yep. And you guys think that I'm super confident. There are days when I'm just like, I don't feel that gr good, you know. And I shouldn't be doing that for, you know, it's bad influence or whatever. But it's just like, I have my bad days too. Leave me alone. Everyone's human. Yeah. yeah. I'm only human. Okay. Except this guy. This guy's a weirdo. <laughs> I, was to, I was about to burst in the song. I thought you. I thought we we're all gonna harmonize each other. <sighs> <sighs> anyways. Yeah, anyways. So, um, guys, the reason I'm really leaving is because this show does not sell this thing. So. You must hate me. You must have wanted me off the show because now my <laughs> my my slave masters are like, get back to work selling this. Bottle of pills that stops your hangovers like magic. You, you Korean you know, using monkey. completely all natural ingredients. The dance Korean monkey. Yeah, they 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 come in there and they throw a bag of kimchi at me. They're like dance, <laughs> dance monkey, and they and have then, like ten muddlers. They <laughs> drop on the floor. Yeah, dude, I start you slapping muddlers on my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make a drink out of kimchi juice, and then also just uh, all natural ingredients. Please buy it. But, uh, it it, it be, doesn't make sense that these don't like. These aren't selling like crazy. They do, but like yeah. no, 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 more. not for my efforts on the podcast. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. why? Because like you guys are literally drinking every week. 
and you guys are getting hungover. I mean, the audience, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And I'm just, and I'm just, we're and trying I'm just to like, save you. How and you're are not you listening. not trying this? Yeah. yeah. Try the product. Tell your friends. Buy nectar. It supports the show, and he'll come back. Yeah. I would and, literally and you can never even get drink. Twenty percent off. It. I agree. Yes. You can even get twenty percent off with your phone number in the link in description right down below. We're also on Amazon. We kill it on Amazon. We kill it on the website. We kill it on TikTok shop. There's tons of reviews, ratings everywhere. So check it out. We're also coming to Seattle. In April, we don't have the date locked 100%, but make sure you text into the number. If you live in Seattle, you want to meet us, you want to come out to a grocery store, support the podcast, support the products, come to, uh, make sure you text in the number below. And then after that, we are coming back to, I already mentioned Hawaii, but there will be other cities and there will be new cities. Ooh. New city. So if you want us to come to your city, make Ooh. sure you send us a text. Oh, and I'll still be there for those. Yes, yes. Wutak will be there for all of that. So, Because yeah. I may... Need to need a break from this podcast, but I'll never let my boy go stand in line for six hours and kiss babies by by myself. By himself. Yeah. <laughs> we have a bigger topic today, as you guys probably saw from the title of this video, and maybe we just rip the bandaid right off. I'm quitting. I've decided I can't take Jeremy's random bursts of song anymore. I hate every time he shows up in a fit that does not match whatsoever. <laughs> What is that? Like, what's going on here? It's actually not one of your worst fits, but... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey, but you know what's funnier? What? He wore this, and then he wore this on top. That's... <laughs> that's when... With the shorts start, is hey, hilarious. That's this when is we a, start questioning. You know, what, you, know, you know what the inspiration is? It's a snow leopard. <laughs> I don't know if that's how that works, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, it's how it works. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, so... I was kidding about roasting Jeremy being the reason, but I am going to leave the podcast for a bit. Uh, this is unlike the last time where I had a nuclear meltdown and you just didn't see me again. I came on here to tell you I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> I'll be on the next episode too because it's with uh, Gamer Doctor Guy and Jeremy was like, please, I don't know if I could talk to him alone. And then, uh, so yeah, I was He like, really said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't believe in his girl? That's Definitely crazy. not. He was like, my girl. I was like, what about Esther? And he goes, my girl. <laughs> I'm f***ing <laughs> He came to defend himself. I was just kidding. Listen. I was just kidding. Don't, Anyways. don't hurt him. He's fine. <laughs> Once I get this ovarian cyst out, I'm going to throw it in your face. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. It's going to make him gag so hard. That's disgusting. <laughs> make me gag. I'll That's leave. <laughs> I'll leave the country. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so I, I am going to be taking uh, a pause indefinitely. Um, I don't think it'll, it, should, it shouldn't be that long, but um, if I am going to go into explaining why, I think that over the course of maybe six months, not sure how long, but over the course of a few months now, I've been slowly, personally deteriorating. Uh, and like in ways that no one would ever know unless you're like close with me and work with me, I guess. So like on the outside, I think that like Super Bond's eyes going up, I'm going up, right? Like everything in life that you can measure seems to be going up. But then, like, inside, it was not going up. It was going down drastically. And then uh, and that started to affect, like, all my relationships, basically. I would get into fights with everyone. Um, like, everyone close to me. Like, if you weren't close to me, you would never know because I'm pretty good at uh, making you like me. But, uh, <laughs> but then, yeah, so I was just hurting people close to me on a consistent basis. And then I was like, oh, I'm doing these things I don't want to be doing. Like, what the f*** is happening? And... Um, and I think that, uh, and so like, you know, I've been on this journey of like trying to better myself for a while now, but the, I don't know. It felt like a, like a real big, like recession in that journey, you know, especially recently. And then, so then a big wake up, I've had a few big wake up calls, but just to go into one was recently my, my co-founders who are two people I not only very much respect, but like the joke we made when we were starting it was like, we are getting married right now. Like that is the level of commitment that we are pledging to each other, right? Is like, this is my hus husband's, you know, like, oh, wait, that means I'm the wife, but these are my wives. Flip that oh. real quick. So then we're getting married. Like that's yeah. the level of like- It's more have, intense than that because it's even more financial. Intense cause yeah, because it's like, I'm not, because they both have girlfriends, right? Like serious girlfriends. I guess when you're married, married for real, you are financially tied, right? But like they both have serious girlfriends and they're like, this is like, almost more important because like it will wreck me in every way of life it doesn't work out you know like girlfriend yes it's very important probably the next most important thing but like 
you're, you're not your bank account not going to zero if, if that fails, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, unless you pick the wrong woman, but anyways. Yeah. Well, okay. well, yes. Actually, very could possibly, very well could possibly go to zero. But if you're doing all that for a girlfriend, you're a fool. We're you getting deserve. sidetracked. Okay, my fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then so they came to me because of um, certain behaviors that I was exhibiting over the course of time, and it's not like any one thing I did was ever so bad, but it was like the combination of everything kind of showed like certain issues I was having in my life that I even recognized and told them. And I think a big one was just like, I let my ego like get extremely inflated. That's the core of everything. I think is pride. Right. And, um, and I think like a lot of the motivations that got me to, to hear was pride. Like, it's like, I'm, I need to be that guy for my family. I need to be that guy for whatever. And it took me very far alone. But like, once you start to involve other people, in the equation, it's like one of the worst things that you can have. There's like, I forget what Pat Riley, I think it was like, it was like, how did you build such a successful NBA dynasty? And it's like, and his number one answer was humility. And when you read like all these books of these extremely successful CEOs, a lot of it is like EQ or humility. And it was like, I was slowly losing track of how to be humble because of certain input constantly of like, why would I be? I'm winning. Like I did this, I did that. Like it was my decisions. I look at all the that I've done and then uh and that's very unchristian of all things too because it is like I, at the same time while I was doing that I'm praying every night being like thank you lord for xyz thank you for bringing me these things in my life giving him with my mouth like the glory for all the things that I am quote unquote doing but then letting those same actions inflate my ego so I was like what am I truly believing did god bring mm -hmm. me this or did I do I believe that I did everything and then that started to affect like the way I treated other people and then I guess um yeah, the whole Hawaii thing happened where I was just like around a lot of the old energy that I was like trying to like expel from my life and not like a not trying to diss you or nothing at all. Of course, you're 24. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was 24, you know, back in my day, <laughs> <laughs> old guy. Yeah. two years ago, <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> but like, yeah, basically I was just like, that's what I was like going home earlier, like not drinking most of the days. And it was just like. When I did drink, it was like, this isn't even fun, right? I'm like, I can see why y'all are having fun. I had a lot of fun doing this when I was your age. But I'm like, I've done this a million times over now. I'm over it. And then, um, but then, yeah. And then it was like, I was just, a, a lot of the time. So over the course of like this past year, I've, I've been very like emotionally turbulent, like where I'll randomly break down crying in the shower constantly. And what a lot of those, re a lot of the reasons why that happens is because I start to remember I did to other people specifically I'd say like like any any ex I've had where I, I've hurt them you know what I mean like if I remember that I just start crying so it was like and at the time it's like I didn't even I couldn't even acknowledge that I did anything wrong wait was, old exes like yeah, yeah like way back when really yeah yeah because oh. I haven't been in a relationship in four years mm. and then my last one I wasn't really like that if anything she was worse to me but like so you were like you felt like some just like shame. And yeah and it's not even like it's not like they've never wronged me either right it's yeah. not like I was abusive or like any of that but like anything I've done where I was like like this person that loved me and yeah. I treated them that way yeah, you're just reflecting yeah, yeah 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 and it would just make me like very sad mm. and like a shame basically a lot of shame and then um and then so like over the course of dealing with that and like trying to f be better there's also like so okay so like this is like Obviously, we talk about girls and dating a lot on this show, but it is like, you won't know. Like, I always never had a problem with girls in my life. But then you get clout and it's like, you go from like being a guy that has to go look for it when you want it to like, I could, it's like grocery shopping. You know what I mean? Like, literally, you can just go into DMs, decide and just message back and forth. And like, if I really wanted to, I could have a new girl in here every night of the week, not even take them anywhere, you know? And it's like that level of temptation and access, like, especially when I was like 24, when I was blowing up was very bad. And then a big thing for young men, especially is they find a lot of pride and ego in how many girls they can sleep with, right? That's a very common thing. Very toxic, very bad for you, but it's very natural, unfortunately. Society's kind of built around it, too, because yeah. it's such a hard thing to do. And it's a, if, it is. especially if you're not the, yeah. the tallest, smartest, best-looking guy, mm -hmm. right? It's, and, and if you didn't have it originally and suddenly you have this power, other people value it, too, because yeah, they want it, too. The words from other people is also very... Like, it's like, yeah, it's, it, if you bag a baddie, right? Like, all your boys are going to be, like, good Or if you get no girls, you get no 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Why that's an we... insult, right? Yeah. Jeremy knows that one well. It's glorified <laughs> everywhere. Like, it's ra- very like bad. Yeah, yeah. Famous people. Of course, yeah. Oh. And it's like, and then, so Movies. basically, yeah, like yeah. you get, you get sucked into it. Um, and I've known for a long time that that was bad for me. So I've cut back on it. But like the, what doesn't change is like the mind. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's like a deep poison seated in my brain. Like, it's not even like I indul- I've been a, quite a long time since I've indulged in just like aimless DMing, right? Like, but like, they're still like extremely attractive girls and they're still like girls that I actually enjoy talking to. Right. Like, but then it's just like the existence of social media in my life was like a big issue of it like the more i put myself online the more attention i get the more temptation that comes my way and it's like i may have been strong enough to defeat temptation on a week where i'm only getting 10 dms but then there's 40 you know what i mean and there's like five of them where i'm like you're you're a nine you know what i mean like i'm gonna respond to you so it's like th- so i deleted all social media from my phone i have people that that post for me anyways so i was just like i remember like literally two years ago where i didn't have someone to post for me and i was just think like if i only i had someone to post for me i'd delete this shit off Wait, my who phone. posted for you today? George posts for me. He's always been, he's been oh. posting for me for like six months. I, I was wondering why the caption was weird. What's the caption? <laughs> it said, I'm a doo-doo. And I was like, why would you say that? <laughs> There's no way he said that because I write my own captions. That's, you almost got crazy. me. <laughs> I was kidding. I was like, what the <laughs> did he make the caption? <laughs> well, no, he would never he said, I'm a recovering addict. Don't DM me. <laughs> George <laughs> always <laughs> makes the joke that he's like, George is always like, I'm going to start responding to these girls that DM you because yeah. he has access to my phone and just ruin everything always so that they <laughs> leave like, you alone. Stop DMing me. Just, just insulting them to their face. Yeah. He, he, he ta- we were talking today because it's been like three days or so. I forget how many days. It's been two or three days since I've deleted it off my phone. But he was like, yeah, no, I get it. He sent me a screenshot of like the <laughs> my Instagram. He was like, bro, if this was my Instagram, I don't know how I'd survive. And it's like, so that's why I was just like, let me delete this off my phone. So deleted it off my phone. That was step one. And also like from a work perspective where I was failing in certain like duties, like I'm the CEO of this brand. We're blowing up. And it's like, was I acting like a CEO? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Like I list like, and I'm very, very grateful for my partners for being as vulnerable and emotionally intelligent as they are and caring about me on a human level. Cause the way they approached me with all this conversation was, I feel like the only, not maybe not the only way. Cause I feel like I'm pretty, I've, I've never been like combative with them over like shit. I'm, <laughs> I feel like you look scared. You're like, I'm like <laughs> maybe with you, you bum. Yeah. Not George and Justin. But, uh, but anyway, so they approached me and I was just like, it like put the fear of like myself in me. I was just like, wow, I got a 180 this right now because they're right. Like we're about to do so much crazy shit with Super Bonsai. And if, if I'm supposed to be the lead, like in the beginning, you guys chose me as the leader. And if I can't, I'm not even amounting to, to y'all in terms of like how much we're, we're, we're putting in. So I was like, yeah, let me get my shit together. And if I looked at the core, it was like a lot of the attention. That's the only distraction. I don't play video games. I don't really go out that much. Right. So it's like, what is my distraction? It's literally just social media. It's reading through comments incessantly. It's Mm. answering girls. It's like, and then even the comments thing that was big, which I think is, is really reliant, uh, relevant to you and maybe even you as well. I, I realized that I was really bad at ignoring negative comments because I really ate up the good ones. Oh, yeah. So if I really, and it's 90% good, right? And it's very easy yes. to just scroll through comments and be like, oh, I love Wu-Tang, blah, 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 whatever, right? And eat that up. Even if you don't think you're eating it up. Just the fact that I'm like, oh, I appreciate that. Yep. I'm eating it up low key, yeah. right? And then I get to one that's like, Wu-Tang's so annoying or whatever. And then I'm just f-ing mad and I'm like. I saw more than one. Oh, well, f- you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, why do I, why can't I let it go? Like, it's just mm-hmm. one comment, one guy that doesn't know about me but it's like why does it bother me so much it's because i let the other one affect me as well so it's like if i'm gonna let you talk nicely to me and really accept it even though you equally know li- as little as this guy who's saying who's talking shit, then it's wow. like of course the, the shit talking is gonna get to me i'm valuing all your opinions no matter what you f- know about me so I, that was like i gotta delete that for that yeah. reason i don't need to look at those either george will tell me what the people are saying dude you don't <laughs> oh they love you Wutai. No. <laughs> Keep going, dude, hey, Make you another don't... video. Tell them about Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Two parts. So one, uh-huh. I've been sending, even though I know you're off social media, I've been sending you memes because I was like, this will be a nice little like, you know, package. Yeah, comes you don't back want to... me to win. No, no, no. I'm saying you, no, I'm saying to your IG. Oh, you okay. can't see them. So when you open oh. it, it'll be like a time capsule. You know, I don't read the memes you send me because they're bad. 
Whoa. I'm just kidding. I do. I do watch them. I'm not sending you anymore. I do watch them. I'm, I'm not no. sending you anymore. I who watch them in batches. Sometimes I'll read the message and I won't have read it though. Who is, but who is, I go back. I go back and I read them. Who is the person that said that they like printed out the, the your buddy when you're in jail, the W the sorry, the NBA finals? Somebody was in prison and he printed. Oh me? Yeah, didn't he print out the NBA finals for you? And he it was that Eddie's boy. It was I've probably got, Eddie's. Yeah, I've, got I've, no, never, I've that. never heard this Remember story that, in my life. Somebody's got a story I've where basically story. somebody was in prison and they printed out the NBA finals and he sent it to him every no, day. I don't remember that story. Yeah, well, that's what I was doing for you, but not anymore, you jerk. Oh, you tried. Uh, two, the comment thing. It's also crazy, too, because you see how toxic IG comments are oh, yeah. and how they just imagine when you get caught by the algorithm and they're ripping into you and you're a person that doesn't have the shell. Mm -hmm. What that does to your mental, yep. it's like, it comments really obliterates are, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And comments are everything. Imagine if you're posting on social media and you're not really, you know, used yeah. to it. And then all of a sudden you have videos that go from 100 views with your friends to even 5,000 views. You're like, I'm doing something. And then all of a sudden you're Five getting Five million shredded. views and a thousand comments of all negativity. Yeah, or you're getting, or or over time, it's all these positive things. It changes your brain. It oh, is a that people yeah. haven't really figured out yet. And honestly, the positive is far more dangerous, in my opinion, or because like if you don't have the the wherewithal to know that like I shouldn't like apply that across the board. If if you're trying to ignore negative comments and your excuses are like this person knows nothing about me, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's the same for the positive. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they might be like, oh, this person's cute or whatever. But like if you let that get to your head, the second that somebody's like, what's wrong with their nose? Boom. Direct attack to your life points because, like, you you put your you put your wall down so you could accept the the, the positivity because it so feels true. good. Yeah. So <clears throat> then, um. So, so does that mean you shouldn't like read comments in general? Um, like, or when, like just when, minimal. Yeah, yeah. When building social media, you need to right. Like, it's, it's, and but for me, like now I can have somebody else read them. So like, I'm going to wait. Wait. What does George tell you? Like, if he's reading the comments, like, no, George doesn't tell me shit. What part is he leaving out? What part is George he, doesn't like, tell me. I'm like, don't tell me anything, George. I don't want to know if they liked it or not. I don't care. I'm imagining, I'm imagining it's like Friday night. George comes over. He's got printouts of comments. <laughs> and he's like, Tuesday, you know, Marlene 17 said, wow, I made that drink with my dad and he loved it. Like, And then he gets to the next page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Billy Bob 453 said, you look like a twink. <laughs> I was going to a shock. Like, Ugh. Someone commented that I blink a lot. And now I like, wear contacts. Yeah, there's sometimes when I'm just like, I think about that once in a while and I just do this. <laughs> but I just try exactly. not to blink, but then I go like And think of how many positive comments you get and like that stuck in your head a lot. She it, it doesn't used to offend. get eaten up by the negative comments. Yeah. One she that's all that's, the comments that's are saying everyone. Especially like you were making TikToks they were pretty before. Bad. You were making TikToks before and it was similar for me with bar chemistry, right? Where I would get tons tons and tons of comments but 99% positive right like how much are you gonna hate on me about a cocktail you know what I mean like oh this guy don't know what he's talking about shut up and that's the that's the interaction right then we got to the podcast mm -hmm. and now on the podcast when you're talking about like literally your deepest most innermost thoughts you, your like faces on there for hours at every angle they can talk about if your voice is annoying like they have every way to like make you actually feel insecure yeah. So like that hurt it like the comments neg anything negative on a podcast comment definitely was pissed me off a million times more. But I don't get offended <clears throat> by like appearance comments. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. They're like you're ugly, you're cross, and I'm just like whatever. But what what does character. yeah like character or either that or yeah. like something that I've said that wasn't true because mm -hmm. I don't research. Then I'm like, damn, I'm a dumbass, and this is why I right, failed well, the different. fourth grade. That's different. And if that it's will maybe, maybe nonsense. that part would. Yeah. But then that's my fault. A little bit, yeah. That that one's different. It's more like the the needless, like, especially the ones that hit you where it hurts, where you're like, fuck, you really analyzed me you. to say that shit. Tell me what hurts you. Huh? No, I mean more like let's say like it's like a topic, right? That we like debate on or like we have opinionated stances on, and then somebody's like misogynist. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Well, I hate the misogynist ones. That's yeah. annoying. But like anything that it's like they like psychoanalyze and they low key get it right, and you're like fuck, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there, there's a few people in our comments that I'm like, where's your psychology degree at? I know you're so hiding it. Alex Moon. Huh? Alex Moon. No, that guy's great. I like his comments. But I'm saying like he psychoanalyzes. Yeah, like, and I'm like, damn, that it. shit accurate as. Who and, is um, he? He's just a uh, shout out Alex Moon. Uh, he be commenting often, and he'll have very in depth comments on all every one of us, uh -huh. reading us for filth. And I'm like, 
you studied every minute of this video. Wait, mm-hmm. show and me. I'm, is he the one like, that? He, he'll make us like characters. Oh, He'll be like, yeah, okay, like this okay, yeah, yeah, ask yeah. for it and be like, hey, like what Naruto character are we? Oh. And then he went in depth on one. And I was like, oh, I like that and guy. And they were super yeah. accurate. You know, super accurate. And I was like, so Put Jeremy's the smartest, biggest dong, best looking, funniest. Yep. I saw so, that one. Sounds like Alex Moon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he knows his stuff. I would <laughs> never been wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I forgot where I was now. Well, so you were basically saying like the Comments. underlying seed of all of it was this ego and it was coming from social media. Yeah, social media. Yeah. So 90, I would say like if I pinpointed it to like, so basically the conversation got to like, so a lot of my issues was literally like example, late to every meeting. Right. And then it was like, all right, let's calm down, buddy. You don't even have a job. Oh, that was pretty calm. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so so yeah, being late to everything and then it's like being late every so often, who cares, right? Yeah. We're entrepreneurs so that we get to do whatever we want to do. But late to everything is like now there's an issue of like, do you even give a f- about my time? And I thought about, I was like, I do give a f- about your time, but my actions don't show it. And then it's like the underlying, if you get to the underlying issue of that, it's like, uh, and then they're like, they were trying to make the parallels of like a few of the things you do show that like your ego has been inflated where you value your own time or your own situation or your own et cetera over anything else. And it's because I became this like toxic main character mindset. And, um, and yeah, so I'm trying to fix that. And, I've been uh, there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. Absolutely. Especially yeah. when you're winning. That's when it happens the most. But especially when you are the reason, like when you have the most forward thinking thing, for example, like Dalsy handles all the boring, shit, like yeah. supply chain and flavor house and things that people don't really get to see. And then I get to be on camera and I create these loud marketing activations or videos and they get millions of views and all of a sudden sales jump up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and then every time we need something, it's like, okay, Jeremy, go pull the ma- magic bullet. Yeah, yeah. So then at a certain time, I'm like, okay, I pulled the magic bullet, which is the most important thing. When in reality, it's like, that's not that's that's not true at yeah, all, yeah. right? You need you need the lineman for the quarterback to be like successful. Exactly, you know? exactly. Score the touchdown, but. and that and that's what it was like a little bit the relationship with George and Justin. Because when we started, what their approach was like: if we handle everything else, and you just do what you're good at, we'll like we have all the pieces to build something crazy. But then slowly, it really became me only doing what I'm good at, and then it's like as the CEO, I should know like every aspect of the business. You know, I should know all these little tiny things. And because I was just becoming so, I was siloing myself off in the world of like, oh, I gotta make more videos. And then I was also becoming miserable making the videos. Like I got really excited doing the health videos and I love doing that. But it was like so time consuming versus I can make three bar chemistry in the time of one. Bar chemistry is selling like a hundred units per video. Let me go back to making bar chemistry. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, here's the muddler again, guys. (laughs) Oh, so you don't? <laughs> I'm just imagining it's like it's like a scene out of Harry Potter. It's like buried deep in your closet thinking you never bring it. It's whispering out to you at night. It's like, neat. <laughs> you're like, no. Oh, no. Low-key. No. Hey, bro, I was like in the state. I got so excited to like make health videos and like be like distance myself a little bit from my chemistry. Too. And yeah, and I was really, because I was excited about and it. I was oh, learning a lot I didn't from know them. that. Yeah, and, the, and, then, uh, and then like, I just had to make the executive decision <laughs> to make what printed money. And then I was like, here's you got, another. You just got drained. Yeah, and it's exactly, doing something mm. that you're f-ing tired of now is just f-ing draining. I didn't realize that's why you stopped the health videos. Yeah, just just an 80 20 rule. It's literally like, oh man, if like yeah, yeah. the cuz with health videos, I have to do tons of research. Like I'm based like I got I'm combing through research papers. I'm f-ing, like making sure that I'm not f-ing some f-ing up. Bartending it's like I know almost everything there is to know about everything here, right? And it's just like and I don't need to ice, search shit. Modeler. Yeah, it's just like suck something f-ing phallic. <laughs> <laughs> make a slutty joke. Yeah, yeah, make make a horny joke. <laughs> Tell you about something about this alcohol. And then sell you super recovery. <laughs> That's the formula, guys. Wait, why couldn't you do something that was health and super bonsai? Like, that would with. sell... What? It's 80-20 rules. No, so no, I do do it. I do do it. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's like, the thing is, we're a, we're a health company. That's what we're building to, right? Yeah. But because we started this with all our own money, we don't have a million dollars to come out with eight products right away, right? We're like, okay, so like the way we thought about it was... This hangover market blowing up right now, it's like a, it's becoming a thing in America. It's always been a thing. Americans are finally figuring it out, right? We had the perfect formula. We were able to work with a team of doctors, create the perfect formula. We tried it. If it works, it's better than all of them. We have all these things where we're like, okay, we got to blow this. And I have millions of followers for a drinking audience. 
It's like no brainer that the first product helps you with drinking. It's in this emerging category. Damn, you try to poison me, man. I, I tasted it. that. <laughs> but anyway, so that's why we started with only this. And any video I could make that sells this on the health page where I have 150,000 followers, I could put it on bar chemistry with 2 million followers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like which one is going to sell more? Always is bar chemistry. Mm -hmm. So while I was building a health audience, because that's what we want to do long term, I was like, right now what we need is to pump these sales and so, like, around the time of, like, um, Black Friday, I was just, I made, like, 40 videos in a month. And it was just, like. You went manic again. I went manic. And then, and then I stopped to go home to New York. And that's when we went on this seven-day bender. And in my call, we're having this, like, deep introspective end-of-the-year call congratulating ourselves for all the success. And then, literally, the next day, they were just seeing me tearing through bottles every night with this guy. <laughs> and, like, we were just going crazy. And then after that, I was like, bro, my body aches. My liver hurts. My soul, My soul is, is depleted. It yeah. makes you want to reevaluate your actions, huh? Everything. I yep. reevaluated everything. And then so, so while I had tons of fun, it was like a let me stop. And then I didn't drink for all that time. And then Hawaii. And I was still good. Honestly, that's when it really solidified. Like, I really don't need this anymore. Yay, free dinner. Yeah. Thank you guys. Hey, you I, don't, I don't care about the dinner. No, no, no. You're getting the, You get the dinner, of course. Come here. I'm happy to buy you the dinner. What the? <laughs> I was supporting you the whole time. I prayed for you every day. I asked Jeremy. I appreciate Jeremy. you. No, I don't know. Well, like, we was, all, we was, all jokes aside. We was I on our knees you. like please, screaming to God. Please, God. <laughs> save this man. No, but yeah. So I forget where I was again. So, so it, was, it, was, it, was, it was ego and your co-founders had really, like they stopped you in your tracks. Yeah, they, 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 they held me down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And... um forgot where that was going with all that well now we're kind of leading to why you're oh yeah and then under the influence is is it so like two things i need is like less uh toxic social media input and less more, uh, time. more time more time number like <clears throat> phys like logically i need more time because this takes up 35 percent, 40 percent of my week let's say right on just thinking about it doing it for it and then um and then the other part is like just like okay where does the most of the the ego and everything come from. And it's like under the influence, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I have people and I have the ability. I'm blessed enough that I could delete the apps and business goes on as usual. So I deleted them. Mm. I might, I will download them back at some point in life, but I don't know when. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else is, um, I mean, kind of in that time of like realization, what else do you think is, uh, what else do you kind of want to implement into your life to hopefully make this lasting change or really actually like not be back here in another year? Mm, Self-control. Also, so basically I called Johnny Oh, as you know, per your advice. So um, something that I've always thought of is like, okay, I I'm trying not to think on my, I'm trying not to. So Johnny Chang, check out his episode if you haven't. Very good, even if you're not religious. But his, um, a lot of the focus of his teachings from the Bible is the, the point that like your thoughts lie to you. Your thoughts constantly change. Your thoughts hate your own self. Like what kind of thoughts are those? How can you hate yourself? You know what I mean? Like very weird. How can you have anxiety? How can you be depressed? You know, like it's like mm -hmm. you don't want any of those things, yet your thoughts tell you you are such. So your thoughts lie to you. That's a very big theme in the Bible. And it's like something that doesn't lie to you, something that always has your best interests and something that never changes. That book is thousands of years old is the word of God. So then, you know, I hear the advice. Don't trust your thoughts. I am a religious person. I've been, I've been reading the Bible. I've been praying. I've been studying the, the concept of it. And I believe, but like whenever I would think to, but I don't know like the word of God that well. So when I would think of how do I not, think, okay, let me try not trusting my own thoughts. What does it fall back on? Just more thoughts. Like, you know what I mean? So, cause it was void of the word of God. There was nothing, there was no alternative to my thoughts. So I'd be like, oh, don't trust my own thoughts. New thought. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's not helping anything. So that advice never really stuck with me. And then now like I am reading the Bible nightly and it's like, I've always found that even as a Christian, like corny advice. Cause I'm like, what do you mean? Why the is that helping you? Like, explain it to me. Once again, needing my logic brain instead of using faith, right? Believing that if I did read this book, maybe certain shit would happen. And, uh, and so, like, I'm, like, in, in Exodus right now. And a lot of the things I've read, even just from, like, Jacob, Joseph, like, all these stories in the Bible, I'm like, 
learning what this person went through and how God had him handle it just gave me a tool in a very specific situation in my life when I'm thinking and I'm thinking wrong because I'm thinking like, Fuck that person, I'm right, or Fuck this person, they hurt me, or this person deserves jack, or I'm right, I did all that. Any of these thoughts, I'm just like, oh, well, I guess like that is what I should think of alternatively. And then because I added that weapon to my arsenal, I noticed like, oh, I should read this book because it is like, like, it was almost like self, like uh, greedy in a sense where I'd be like, oh, if I have time to read, I'm going to read this book that's going to make me more money. This book from the CEO that taught me like marketing and business and this book on leadership. And that's what I would read instead when in reality, this book is low-key teaching me far more helpful things than any of those books have. Because those books are like the, it's like the how to do two plus two. When yeah. this, when the Bible is teaching you why does two exists why does four exist yeah i guess i don't know if that's a good analogy but or or uh well another thing on that too and this is by far the biggest thing that helped change my life was the teacher aspect oh yeah like the bible like even if you even if someone listens to this right now and they're like okay i'll start reading the bible because i want to you know improve in any way it's like you will not make progress without a teacher yeah you'll make some progress but you but there's so many times where i would interpret the bible and i'd be like but this makes no sense. This this goes against what you were saying. Well, that's and I you don't understand anything. Oh. <laughs> my fault, man. This is one of the he happiest days changed. of my life on the podcast that Wu Talk is leaving. Oh. Damn. Yeah, how's it feel? It feels bad. Hey, comment the meanest comment about Wu Talk because he won't even read it. <laughs> yeah, this oh, is fuck. your time. No, I'm just No, I'm gonna go read those. Yeah. No, I'm gonna print them out and wrap your car. You're gonna walk out to your car. Who talks hair is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> when this and if they don't leave me comments, I'll make them a fake ones. A lot of counts. But anyways. Yeah, I would have put it past you. Uh, uh, John, like when I would call Johnny and I'd be like, I don't understand. I would call him for anything. I'd call him with business problems. Mm-hmm. And you'd be surprised too. I'd be like, huh, like what does he know about business? But like you said, he just has such a deep understanding of the Bible and humans. Yeah. And he could see people's hearts. And that is a way, like, he, it doesn't matter what the problem is. He can sense people's hearts and he understands my heart against, like, yep. what the word of God is. And he coaches me through that. And that has been monumental, like, yep. literal game changing, feels like miracles every day. I'm literally telling people out there and I'm saying this and I will show it in the documentary one day. I'll talk about this once we get past a certain thing. I've had millions of dollars come into my life and since following letting go of my own thoughts. Yep. It's it's freaky. And he still I've had, feeds us ramen noodles for no, lunch. This is why well, I'm actually it's not like leaving it's not, it's not workplace. Not like I haven't seen it either. It's not it yet, million either. dollars His in my bank account. girlfriend still pays the bills. It's not million dollars in, in my this bank account. This is the kind of man that we're talking about. <laughs> it's not million dollars in my bank account, but I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. We did we, we have been praying for you for a very long time. And I feel like, what you, like you said about your co-founders, yeah. how they were able to approach you. Yeah. To be honest, I stopped being very combative with you but like there were certain things where I'd be like, okay, you're kind of wiling and I would, you know, push back a little. But it took you to kind of get to this point to truly hear the message. Yeah. I think that if it came 50% and you were like, nah, but I'm still right about this, we would have been on the same track. It would still go yeah. down. So, you would maybe have improved a little bit and still go down. It took this moment and that was like, it was literally, like I'm going to say, it was God. There was no way that, that, you could have met those two people. They could, like, all yeah, these yeah. situations could happen. It was just too good for you to learn this lesson, Agreed. right? And, and that was, I mean, that's how I've always looked at everything in my life. Like, my life is, like, a f- there are movies with less dramatic, like, f- J-curves than my life. So it's, like, that's why I've always been religious. It's, like, bro, the f- circumstances for me getting even out of juvie, insane. Then the circumstances of, like, me even being able to, like, figure out how to go to college, insane. Right. Like I literally couldn't get a loan. I couldn't get financial aid. I was literally an illegal immigrant. And I walked into a restaurant that you could print four hundred dollars a shift. And the manager dead ass just because he was like, I just liked you. I saw something in you that told me you needed this job. And he hired me for that reason. And that money let me go to college. In college, I meet the people that like inspire me. Literally, like my roommate and best friend started an Amazon FBA business. That's why that was the business I started, because that was the only business I ever seen with my eyes a kid start. And then I, and it was just like every little building piece, no matter how I thought my life was, like was like so carefully placed there. And then now I'm here. Now I have this platform where I have people like Johnny come on. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's like, yeah. whoa. You know what Dude, I mean? Like what am I supposed to do with this? You know? Same thing from the P 
period of it's been one year since we had Johnny on this podcast. Thank yeah. you, Vit. You were the one who put that on her lap for that to be you. It's also crazy. Yeah. It's just so weird to meet this tattooed guy, freak. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but honestly, this pod... <laughs> we just laugh at the end of that. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Dude, and hey, hey, he just gets right back hey, to it. Hey, no, this podcast is the... Cr- my whole business, right? To meet all of you guys and for this to work the way it did and for us to go through these growths. Yeah. Like, dude... Our, it's been a roller coaster like this, which is why I think it's so many times where it's like we feel like it's the end and we go through a lot of drama behind the scenes, but it's to teach us the ultimate lesson. And oh, when dude. we, when I do, when I do surrender to the lesson, and I truly let go of myself, it, like literally the next day, some miracle will happen, and yep. it just works out. And I'm like, this is crazy. I'm truly learning how to let go more and more yeah. because, like, like you, I'm very hard headed. So, yeah. oh, like me, yeah, you're hard headed. I don't know about that. I said it. But anyways, yeah. Lies aside. Uh, so so Johnny Johnny said something that really f- struck. Oh, well, I guess we'll just wait since this guy is disrespectful. <clears throat> I think it's hard to like unlearn cer- certain things because you're taught. Anything. Yeah, you're you're taught to believe in yourself and trust trust yourself. Yeah. But then false teachings. Going to church and reading the Bible and just talking to Johnny, you're. It's basically saying like, don't trust your thoughts. Yeah, it's exact. Opposite. Stop believing in your in yourself. Like you but didn't. There's do no this. evidence that like your thoughts were the right thing to follow. Anyways, like mm-hmm. how many times do your thoughts flip flop? Like you know, what I mean. And then, but second, so something Johnny said that actually like, because like I've heard him say most of the stuff that most of the advice that he was giving, but something he said like made me tear up mid convo was like, you know, Wutai, God really loves you. I was like, oh well, I hear that all the time from everyone, and then he's just like. Um, most people like would need to hit absolute rock bottom for God to bring enough change into their life for them to change. But you're here calling me with all this awareness about your situation and your life is still, your, your business is still going up. You still, you can choose to walk away from the podcast as much as you want. You know, like it's like most, like most people like me, I think would have needed to lose everything to get to a point of like humility to like look to God. And he was like, but you were able to do it like God brought that to you without like losing anything technically. Like Damn. if anything, I'm mm-hmm. my shit's still going up. So I was like, that shit, you know, that shit made me sit there and I'm like, he's right. Cause like other times in my life that God has worked, it was like wow. absolute rock bottom. Yeah. Right. And then now I'm just like, damn, but it, he, yeah, exactly. Like he's done, he's worked enough in my life that I think that I can realize. That's the thing with a lot of people too. Right. It's always, if they're not believers, it's like, well, then why did this happen? Why did this? And it's like, that's what you have to let go of. That's that's your thought. And through and you let go of that through finding the right teacher. And the formula is pretty damn simple once I started doing it. And so, I'm like... Somebody's got to care. The thing about finding the right teacher, somebody's got to care enough. A lot of the things, like whenever I get into like arguments or debate about God or religion, the questions that they're throwing at me, they don't want an answer to. And they're such A-level questions. It's like, bro, everyone in the world has asked that question. You think that... You think that nobody has, you think anyone that hasn't believed in, that believes in God right now hasn't asked the questions you're asking? These are 12 year old questions about God. And like when I'm trying to give you an answer, you're angry rather than trying to like actually hear anything. So it's like a teacher for somebody like that, like to be, to care about you enough to battle through that with you. There's very few people in the world. Yeah. yeah. Also, he says it in a way that I could actually understand it. Oh, that's a that. lot of a lot of pastors or you know. They make no sense. No sense at all. Yeah. Dude, I see so much. Like, I see a lot of like Christian content going viral on Instagram, so and it's cool. all just buzzwords. It goes. Yep. It, it, they'll literally be like. God came to me and he really spoke and, and oh, I hate his that spirit shit. filled me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just filled with well, his what, spirit. What does that even mean? And, and, and at that moment, I was brought to my knees and I felt his salvation and my and I rebuilt my relationship with my mom and my dad. I'm like, you gave me nothing tactical and you used a bunch of buzzwords. Yep. You are a snake oil salesman. But you know what's super funny? You know what that podcast, one of them is? And I don't mean no hate to them. I've never met them, but I just saw the clip. It was like, Girls Gone Bible or Bro, something. Bro, I love that podcast. How dare you? And I looked at who followed. It's they're, they're they're two attractive white women. Yeah, they're very and, uh, very beautiful. And then I clicked it, see who followed. It's like Wu Talk follows them. Like I was just like, but like they actually. You're looking at me. I'm not. I didn't. You're you're, you're, you're looking at like clips. This. I've seen them post clips where it's incessant buzzwords. But I've also seen from them where I'm like, whoa. And I mean, being hot helps. But like, you know, yeah, dude, yeah. I'm like both like they're like nine. There's, <laughs> I was like, there's no reason. Yeah. Like you guys aren't like theologically on a level where I'm like, you guys be spitting. Like, they are a Johnny. 
Dude, they went on George Janko's podcast and to his face convinced him, like confronted him about cursing and convinced him he was wrong. I thought that was the corniest clip. She was just like, one day I was so disgusted that I stopped swearing. I was like, shut the no, fuck No, you gotta up. watch like, I watched, I listened to the whole episode. Oh. So, anyways, but either way, there you go. Um, you hate it when people judge you based on a clip, and yet you're going I'm just to do the same there's a thing. Lot, I'm saying there's a lot of there's a lot of like fodder. All I heard was yep. that he called I don't agree two that girls attractive. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was yep. like, what? Said that he did indeed do that. He did indeed do that. Yeah, no. in, in the restroom, just he trying said, to he pee. Specifically and, said, and he specifically said, I wish oh, I yeah. had a white girl. I think I heard that too in there. I heard that. That's crazy. I just don't. We'll help him. We'll help you jump in. Hey, 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 hey. You gonna listen to this guy? Gaslighting 101. Guy? Gaslighting 101. If you learned it from me, I would know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but either way, I'm I'm happy that again, it's like a pretty wild situation that you've ended up in, and it's like worked. You know, yeah. you got to learn a, a lesson. Yeah, and uh, so I decided that I cannot be around Jeremy any longer. <laughs> I have to quit this podcast. I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. If I have to list all the good things that happened yeah, to me. Yeah, list them, list them. All right, let's start with... Getting out of juvie. Number one is Ian. Go okay. There, there we go, Wait, Ian. Are we talking about things that happen in this room or like in your life? <laughs> in my life, in my life. So then number okay. one, Ian. Number two, being born. <laughs> okay, nah, for real though, I'd say... No, nah, I'm not even going to go that far back. That's way too far back. But um, number one, probably bar chemistry. I was joking. Move the f*** on. Number two, <laughs> number two is probably... Uh, Vit. Okay. Number you, three. Wait, 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 time out. How do you think you meet me, Vit? Oh, uh, Jimmy. Number three, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, probably Esther. She really brought a lot to the podcast when she came on. We needed that feminine energy. Mm-hmm. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, number, it smells a lot better in here now. Yeah, yeah. Number five, Tristan. Yeah. I, oh, I agree, sorry, sorry, Tristan. You're bumped to number six because it's Eddie. I, I, need, I need to remember mm. my, my girlfriend, Eddie. Mm. Yeah. How do you think Eddie would feel being below Vin and Esther? I'm, you know surprised, what? I'm surprised I was up that high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah, me, yeah, let yeah, me yeah, move, yeah. Let thought, move thought, Eddie. Thought, Eddie would be... I'm going to move Eddie all the way up. He's number one now. So whatever place we were at. Over bar chemistry? Down. Yeah, yeah. Over uh, bar chemistry, then Eddie. There we go. You're right. I'm losing track. I'm losing yeah. track. Um, and then what about, after... What about, uh, what about Joe. Does Joe, he, Joe gets on the board. Joe gets on the board. Joe, you're at number three you now. Two, yeah, you're after Eddie. How do you guys feel about getting bumped, even though you guys have done so much? You know, I don't give a it f- happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy Is don't she... know how to f- improv. <laughs> 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 no, he's just honest, and that's why he is at the place. Hey, yeah. I was I was your first up until today. He was outside. He took a phone call outside, and he was like, "I love you." And I was, "Who the f- is that?" He was like, "It's Johnny." I said, "Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. whoa!" So Johnny first, me second. That's always how it's been since. I'm you bisexual. <laughs> there, another some more news. I'm into guys. Uh, some, some more news. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is the hot. This is the tea, hottest tea in the podcast. Uh, I literally can ask. I wish she was anything. a white woman. Oh. <laughs> I wish I'm lying. I'm lying. Oh, shit. I wish you were a white man. Oh. Clip it. <laughs> Not only is he bisexual, he's a fetishizer. It, it, it's fine. <laughs> Every single time he says stuff like that, he has Ooh. to buy me food, so it doesn't matter. Damn, that I'm, scared me. Okay. Yeah, when the cameras turn off, I get reprimanded. Yep. She's like whipping me in the corner. <laughs> and then I'd say George and Justin. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we're still going on with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, I feel like it's important that we move on to the next segment of the podcast. Okay. Where's Benjamin Franklin in all this? He made you who you are right now. Yeah. That is me. <laughs> your forefather. Yeah, your forefather. <laughs> Have some respect. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, this is why you're not on the list. I haven't spoken a word this episode. <laughs> he said he, said yeah. he was going <laughs> to speak a lie. He didn't speak. You know why? <laughs> why? I'm not, I don't like. I don't. You guys were having a conversation. I don't interrupt. Uh, you're it's not even about interrupt. It's a podcast. Do you, you have any? Th- do you have any thoughts of, of? I had a lot of thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you not say so? Because the way this podcast goes, bro, it's someone's talking, and then before I can say something, someone else interrupts. No, that, raise that's raise your hand. Excuse me. I would like. This, to this, this 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 motherfucker acting like he's so meek. <laughs> I don't know what to in do. In every situation yeah, other yeah. than this in life. He's like, hey, b- b- why don't you like me? <laughs> Come make out with me. <laughs> but I am a I'm a, I'm a I'm a big believer in letting people talk. So <laughs> Okay, so what you gotta say? I don't know. I was just pointing that out. I was just... oh, okay. Raise your hand in the future if you want if you're feeling shy. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling serious. Shy. What? No, I wasn't feeling shy. It's just the way I know our, how our conversations go. If I interject, it's going to go off a whole nother rail. 
And with the rail we were on was one of the best rails we've been on. You in like a while. getting rail? You, can like, you <laughs> like getting rail? Uh, nice and joke. then there we go. Nice joke, there idiot. we go. There we go. So why is higher than you? That's a funny. Oh, hey, you haven't. Even, what am I yet? Am I on it yet? We go. We got to ten. You weren't on it. No, you didn't get to ten. Oh, George. And then your brother wasn't on there. Well, that's because from the past, like he's way too grandfathered in. You know. Got it. Your so mom I, and your brother, like, yeah, not yeah, even, they're, yeah, like, yeah, they're not like, even okay. able to be ranked. Of course, they're number one and two. Okay. Um, Wait. So let's just go through the rank really quick. Okay. Oh my God. Our chemistry. No, no one cares. Our chemistry. Eddie, Eddie. Joe. Joe. Vit. Esther. Esther Ian. Ian. Tristan. Tristan. I think Co- oh, no, no. Co-founders. Ian. Tristan. The muddler. No, no. Co-founders are two. So George, Justin, who? Yeah. You got to pick one no, of them. Over co-founders? The- no, no. You can't just group two people uh, in the one. That's like I knew a- George first. George, Justin. George, Justin. Ian, Tristan. Tristan. And then my muddler. And then your muddler. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. 10. You That's guys 10. did have a lot of good times. What about your first love? That taught you a lot? Uh, she didn't teach me that much. Okay. All right, anyways, so um, did you have anything on his story before I ask you some questions? Well, if I did, I forgot all about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, uh, like I said during the meeting, like, I, like, I'm happy he's on this new journey. I think, I think this is what, like, this is what you're supposed to do at this age. I know, I know. There's, I, especially in LA, I see a lot of people that like, what, man? <laughs> You're too old to sit on a podcast. <laughs> nah, not even the podcast. They meant partying, you. Yeah, oh, no, you just, degenerate. I know, I know you want a family soon. I know you want success. So it's like, I don't think I'm at the point where I can give up what you're giving up, but I think one day I'll get there. Uh, I think you're becoming more like Jeremy. Yeah. Oh God! I was like, "Don't like say old that decrepit. shit." I thought that was a compliment. I was like, "Oh, fucking compliment!" Thank you. Well, so You've never my, been more offended. My question to you, Vit, is like, there are some things that Wu Talk said where he was like, "Oh, I see how you know." Right now, it's like you know, you're partying, you're doing twenty four year old things. Absolutely, but it 24. can it can lead you to a path that brought him to where he got broken down. And he's Absolutely, like, he's not saying that you do it, but he's like, it could. And there's little moments where he's like. Yeah, so like, what do you think about when he says my, something like that my, my thoughts on this situation is I think I am now entering the phase. It's slightly delayed in my life. I'm entering the phase that whereas you're going on this path, I'm just entering the path that you started way back when. Mm-hmm. And I, I will say as of right now, like being truthful to myself, I do let ego kind of kind of run me a little bit but not in the sense that i think i'm better than everyone and i've I've never been that i don't think i'll ever be like that ego more in the sense of like i explained to you guys it's more like the first year i was in la right and the first year we started doing this i met so many people and it was it was really cool meeting them but it was like there were there were some people i met where i could tell that um how do i i don't even know how to explain it. it was like i was beneath them and in the moment, maybe I didn't think about it, but like I would like it was a passing thought. I think that compounded into where I, where I am now, where it's like other than me, this podcast, our friends, suburb talks, and like the the few people I've met that are like genuine friends. I don't care about anything else in this world right now. Where I, I like I'll say like I am actively against the world. Like I'm at war with the world, and that's where that's where my mindset was when I was a teenager. I think my mindset has reverted a lot, a lot to to stuff that I know. Do you th- do you think that's healthy though to be like cuz if you really look at what your life is now it's like you don't have to be against anybody. Nobody is against you if that makes sense. Like yeah. maybe maybe you meet some douchebag in LA that mm-hmm. we've all met that person mm-hmm. that thinks they're better cuz they got more money, cars, better business, whatever it is. But it doesn't like it doesn't phase me, but for some reason it seems to phase you, or like you have to create uh, that idea not, in your head. Because that, when, when you put it like that, it's almost like, like I am trying to compensate. Compensate, yeah. It's not that. It's more literally like I want success so bad that I do not care about anybody else and anything else right now. Mm. Like it's just the people I care about, and that's just my mindset has always been like that. Like I've always said, like this world is just like against you. You find the people you care about and you tackle it together. So if, if you have somebody that's close to you saying, Mm -hmm. Hey, that mindset and that path is unhealthy. There's other ways to get there Mm -hmm. to me. And then you're like, 
no, I don't care. That's where I'm at. It's like you're almost choosing to ignore your mentor, essentially. Somebody that's like, hey, I can I can save you from the pain that I went through. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then yeah, what do you think about that? I think that my that I've always learned through experiences. You know that saying that like a smart guy learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from the mistakes yeah, of I'm others. Not fucking wise, but, but you can, can be. But exactly. Well, no, it's like it's 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 not that serious to where it's like I'm turning into a whole new person. I, like I'm trying to find the words to explain it, bro. It's like it's not. Uh, there is nothing in life where it's like you'll have one or two actions that turns you into a whole another person. Mm-hmm. But it's like yeah. everything in life is the small decision you made. Where you get to choose, how should I treat this one person in this one situation? This way or this way? You know what I mean? And then when you, you know, over time make enough choices that went into a slight direction, you have a new standard now. So now you're looking at a situation three, three, three decisions later, this way or this way. And you've desensitized yourself from those past three decisions. Mm-hmm. So that's like, there's this theory that people who can sleep around a lot are psychopaths, right? So that theory stems from every time... Like, there is absolutely people you meet where both parties are just like, F- it, we're having fun, right? In fact, that's probably the majority of it nowadays. But every so often, you know, this person likes me a little too much. And while they are saying the things they're saying that they're cool, I and know no dummy. I know that if I proceed with this, I will not be attached to you, but you'll be attached to me. And the fact that I've ignored that enough times, each decision in its own, not a bad thing, right? But then 40 of those decisions, not 40? Saying, whoa, 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 random numbers. 40 of those decisions, and suddenly, number 41, even if, like, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're making that decision off of a whole different judgment basis, right? I'm four years older than you, and you're saying that you're entering the stage of life that I'm, I was on, right? And I I'm, think so. You are. You, you're, when I was 24 is when I blew up on social media on bar chemistry. Yeah. And I think that I had, like, more, I was, like, had more focus, like, more, like, learned discipline, but you're getting there, like you're starting the gym, you're starting certain things, right? Yeah. And your life will also only be up. You're gonna, you're entering the stage of like, you'll get more opportunity, you'll learn how to like lock in on shit you don't wanna do. But like, the number one thing that makes me cry alone in the shower, and I don't think you need any more reasons to cry alone in the shower, is reflecting on things that originally I thought weren't so bad that I would have done whatever to get to the point yeah. that I'm at, yep. and looking back at it being like, oh, I did not have to do that. In fact, I probably would be better off had I not done that. And they'd be better off. And this, and everything would be better had I not done that. You, you, and you have literally every resource and person yeah. to depend on when you do feel in those mindsets to pick up the phone and be like, yep. talk me off this ledge. And you, you have a lot more than I had back then to, in terms of like, I didn't like legit, like growing up, I didn't know anybody like me. Like, w- like in terms of any capacity, there was no Asian person that was cool. There was no Asian person that like got girls in any capacity at all. So like for me, it was like, oh, because I can, I must, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And then like there was another, like there's no entrepreneurs anywhere, successful ones at least. And then there was, like, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, so I had no guidance whatsoever. And I did every wrong choice down the line. The other, the other thing, too, that I see a similarity in of what he was saying earlier in his story was the, okay, let me not trust my thoughts, but then it just fills with another thought. You're probably sitting there in your head all day thinking about these things. It's not like you're just spewing things out of your mouth. You're very self-aware mm-hmm. of where you're at in life. And then you're, you're conscious. You're, you're kind of being like, okay, let me try to make this decision on my own um, instead of, again, consulting people that could be like, just don't do that. Well, here's... I guess I guess I started the the story a little early, so I was gonna tell you guys like like I haven't spoke. There was a what three month four period where I barely spoke any words on this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like I never said it to the audience, I never said it to you guys, but it was like I ranted on my Instagram story one time, and it was like I had imposter syndrome. Like that's that's the best way to put it. I I had gotten to L.A. And in my head, it was like, I got here by myself. I did this by myself. And then I'm meeting all these new successful people. And suddenly, I don't fit in no more. And I started hating myself. I was like, I didn't work for this. I, I see the amount of work other people work. I didn't work for this. Like, I got blessed with this randomly. And then it was just months of me trying to figure out who I was. And it was like, also like, after that crazy Coachella um, yeah. Molly trip that, <laughs> that changed me as a person. <laughs> and... um. Also, like, 24, 25 is, like, the most 
uh, what's the word? Ch- like the most changes, the most uh, impactful, impactful, yeah, impactful years of your life. So it was I was dealing with all that plus the traumas from. I'd say all your twenties. After twenty three, it's like straight every year is like holy shit. Yeah, no, no, that's bro, exactly. I was talking to one of my homies from back home, and I was just like. For so long, I felt like I was stuck at like 17, 18, and then I turned 24, 23, the, the last year of last year, or the last year, and then I was just like, every single month, I had a new realization about myself, and it's like, well, what do I do with this now? I had to circumnavigate this and circumnavigate that, so it was, it was a crazy few months. I would say New Year's was really when I was like, all right, like enough soul searching, blah, 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 let me try to turn this into something, and then in that sense of like trying to be a different man and come into into my own sense of what I want to do and what I want to chase, I resu- I reverted kind of back to my teenage mindset where it's like, like I said, like me against other people. Because for some reason, I literally have it tatted on me. Like I feed off of anger. I feed off of like competition. I I prosper from pain, and that's just what I know. But and e- even if I know that's wrong, that's just all I know. So that's what I'm trying to circumnavigate now. Can I can I say a piece? Mm. So everything you just said is the exact. It all boils down to the thoughts thing because, like, even the fact that you had imposter syndrome, it's because you came in here like I did X, mm-hmm. I brought myself Y, right? And then so for me, same thing. I I did all this. I brought myself here. And that's where the, that was the source of the pain because at the, the same source of the pleasure, the same source of the sense of pride was the same source of pain. If you're like, I brought myself here, but it was all luck, right? Then you're going to feel like an imposter. You're going to feel like you didn't Definitely. deserve to be here. But God does not make mistakes. And God put you here. God put you in this situation, right? Hey, so, you know what? My bad. What? No, no, no. Say, say. You know what uh, changed my mind? Remember what? that conversation we had in Hawaii? Which one? <laughs> when, I, when I got naked. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So before, wait, wait, wait! Hold on. <laughs> what? Wait, what? You got naked under the covers. Yeah. So I didn't know. Before we fell asleep, we were having a whole. Was was, the night before you stripped him naked? Yeah. We were talking about just like recap. Oh, like, oh Hawaii, Hawaii. Yeah, now yeah. this yeah. recent, I was like, In, interpersonal relationships, uh, troubles, blah blah blah. But you had said something like, you basically pointed it out. It's like the way you speak to yourself. Uh, basically, you said like, I just doubt myself a lot, and then. It never, I had never noticed it until that because I had never spoken to myself. Well, I mean, I had, but like I hadn't spoken to myself like that in many years. And then it was like a flip had switched. And when I was going through that whole, shit, I was looking at everybody and I was assuming like, oh, they work harder than me. They do better than me. And then I would use that as like motivation to like, oh, I need to do more. But then I would tell myself I need to do more, but suddenly I can't do more because it's like, the, all of this is just so new and I feel yep. so lost and it would just tear me apart so much. But that's like, you know how you say that that is your motivation? Like you're, like the Victoria song example of like trying to create or tr- like create as an anything, create work ethic from a place of negative energy like that is a, it's like, it's like running a lawnmower on dirty oil, right? Absolutely. It's like, it might turn on, it might do the job, but once you turn it off again, it's dirty up the piping like it's just like then you got to turn it on the next time you're using the same oil it's just slowly expiring more and more versus like the electric one charge that on some clean mm-hmm. last way longer right it's like come up with a sustainable fuel source and like it's not even like don't rely on motivation as a fuel source either. i forgot what i was saying earlier oh yeah so like you are you are you're in a situation that like people literally like movie level like people dream of that happening right like go to jail on some like uh Heroic. justice Right. And then like be released and the whole world is you're famous because people think you're hot. Right. Like Captain Save a Ho. Like legit. Like, you know, and it's like then you get to around people of the level that you're like catapulted to. And yeah. you're like, damn, I don't work as hard as them. I don't X, Y, Z. But yet you're in those circles. I mean, why did God put you there? It's like you can think like I'm an imposter. I'm here by accident. And those are your thoughts and a reflection of how you're feeling about yourself. But instead of listening to yourself, trust that the guy who designed everything, the guy that made the atoms that create you the guy that made it so that precipitation feeds grass and then animals eat grass and then other animals eat those animals and then you eat those animals and the cycle of energy just continues that guy decided that you should be there that guy does not make mistakes you know what i'm saying like you're supposed to be there you're supposed to learn you're supposed to figure it out you're supposed to feel like that and you're supposed to like change and also if you want to take if, if the biblical message doesn't necessarily connect you should think about what victoria's song says where like we we implanted this idea that life has to be like brutally hard for us to be successful. It's like, or 
or you've you've tapped in. You've been able to like you didn't have to be like your father. You were able to see yourself and attract these things into your life because you know you're you're more you have humility. Like even that you said you're like, dude, I wanted to join the podcast because I saw the way that you guys operated and I wanted to be around you guys. You showed up early, like all those t- types of things. Oh, you're willing to learn. <laughs> used to show yeah, up early. yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You have humility. You have empathy for other humans that are lesser than you, right? You could have been a person. So all those things are that's you showcasing expansive thought, and then yeah. all of a sudden the universe gives. Life does not, it's happening in my own life. And I believe in, in the Christian God. When I let go, I don't have to worry about like who talks acting a certain way, whatever. God will, God will handle it. And he's, what way was I? What I mean, way? in a good way, dude, look at you're better off right now, right? This guy is so you, combative. No. no, no, it's only when you talk. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying like, it is literally getting handled. There was literally a situation. Can I say this? I need to wait. I'll wait like a couple weeks and I'll tell this story. Mm-hmm. Very dire situation. Very, very, very dire. Just a very dire situation. I'll tell the story in like a month. And, I and, and, won't care about it back. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But he can't, he, for privacy reasons, he can't yeah, tell he can't. Okay, but, okay. but regardless, things, things are just fixing itself. And that can be for you. It doesn't have to be like, these people are working so hard, whatever it is. Instead, it's like, okay, I have these really amazing people that are around me. I'm going to trust them more. I'm going to let them do the work. Okay, I'll give you an example that I can't talk about. So I was in a situation with an employee at my company where uh, we had been working for get, together for two years and we butted head on, heads on a lot of things. And I, But I did not do a good job as a leader doing typical leader things like a monthly report to check in and having goals set for... I'm thinking who it is. Yeah, oh. She's just pondering really uh, she hard. Wants, she wants the tea. You already know this. I already told you this. Good and once you. I finish the story, it'll make sense. So anyways, I didn't. I wasn't a good leader. I did, like In typical business, you're checking in on the person. You are setting goals, collective goals from them. You're supposed to empower them. Mm-hmm. And instead, I was like, you know, I was so busy with making these amazing things happen for the company on the internet that that person should figure it out. And slowly, right, I was just like, because I also had a personal relationship with this person, I said, Forget it. You figure it out and you can deal with the other parts. Other people in the company can deal with you and I'm just going to go off this way. And over time, though, in my head, I was just building this idea. I'm like, you are useless. And then this person said, he was like, Jeremy, doesn't give me the time of day. And I'm doing all these things that he doesn't see. And so we were just butting heads. And it got to the point where I was just like, I think I should just fire this person. Mm. And I talked to a mentor and he was like, dude, you are the absolute worst leader possible. This person deserves their day deserves their 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 day in court but i was like i didn't even want to give them that time Mm -hmm. right because i'm like it's so far gone i'd rather just cut it what it is it's a bad relationship imagine just like a bad ex like you don't even settle we just i throw her out on the on the front door and i never respond that's that's the way i was about to handle it and then um at that time as well we badly needed just like veteran leadership and this dude that was an advisor worked for multi multiple billion dollar companies was like Bro, I've been watching you guys and I think I'm ready to work for you guys. Just out the blue. And we needed him badly. And all of a sudden he came into the business and he was like, oh, that employee? He's like, dude, I think he's good. Let me talk to him. He's like, okay, yeah, I talked to him. He's doing really good work. I'll take him. You don't have to deal with it anymore, Jeremy. And all of a sudden he took it off my plate. And then I started like trying to micromanage that. I started going to him. That I'm like, yeah, but what? Like he hasn't done this X, Y, Z. And he's like, Jeremy, I'll handle it. Like, don't worry. Like if he, if he doesn't work well under me, then I'll cut him. Like you don't even have to do it, whatever it is. And I still had these thoughts that I had to get involved with it. And then all of a sudden I talked to Johnny and Johnny was like, are you stupid? I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> And he was like, he didn't say, he didn't say like that. Uh, Johnny definitely did not say yeah, that. Yeah, he was just like, but I felt, I was like, damn, I'm, he was like, Jeremy. That's how you talk to yourself. Yeah, yeah, he was like, your thoughts, you were trying to imprint your old way into figuring out what it means for you to run this company. And God just delivered the most high level person into your business. Why does that guy want to leave these, he was getting paid half a million bucks and he wants to work for you. And then all of a sudden in a relationship that you thought was completely a, a useless employee, this guy thinks he's super valuable and then is now taking him to help your company mm. you don't have to lift a finger here i was in my head thinking like oh for me to be a ceo and a leader i need to deal with these things and i need every no every part of the business no dude ruining it for a i don't lift a, i don't lift a finger now i don't even have to deal with that sales thing and now i get to focus even more on the shit that i love and i don't even have to think about that stuff anymore it's handled and i was just like Whoa. And I think it's the same thing where you're coming into this and you're like, oh man, I don't do as much or I, I feel so invaluable. They're doing so much. But it's like, 
You don't have to do much. You just got to be yourself. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't want this no, no, being no, no, misconstrued. No, 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 no not, not like that. You, you get what I mean, though. Yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. to handle certain things. You it's like stuff. you need to come. Yeah, you need to come. In. He's not saying what no, you no, think no. he's saying. No, no, you need to come and perform. <laughs> of and, course, of but course. The other things are taken care of, so you could be the best performer. You could go out and yeah, network. You could bring yeah, yeah. amazing guests. You don't have to have imposter syndrome. Yeah, man, you're still got the 24 year old liver. You're going out all the time. Where the guests at? Yeah. But but I hope you I hope you that that parallel helped in kind of like no, of course your it did. Yeah. And it's like I like I'll I'll give myself grace. I do know I would I would like to suck my dick a little bit. I am very <laughs> self aware. That's one one of my always it's always been one of my strengths is I've always been well aware of who I am as a person. Dude, and I for know real. suck your dick for Wait, real. How come I wish you guys I could. can suck your dick? Isn't it easy? Like No, no, no. Right. We don't have well, enough. We're yeah, not yeah, yeah. doing uh, this. Can I, I speak for once? Yeah, you need you, you need more than three. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I know that's a, even yesterday I sent a text like whenever I work out like I get these like I want to take over the world, and it's like I I'm pretty sure it's from my ego, mm-hmm. but it's like when I when I get hyped up, it's especially when I get like like these moods. Where I want to do shit with my life, the only way I know how to do it is when I was struggling, when I literally had nothing, when I, bro, there, there used to be sometimes when I used to like, almost like as a joke, but like kind of serious, like I kind of want to just start from ground zero and struggle again. Cause that was when I was literally my hungriest, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, that would be stupid. Yeah. But it's like to, to explain my mental state, that's the only way of being that I've ever known. Exactly. And, and it's, it's all you ever known. So it's, it's like very tempting. Well, when you have no other options, I kept falling back into my old self too. I would yeah. be micromanaging. I'd be upset. I would try to fight things. But it, it, takes, it takes, again, trusting people that you deeply believe in and actually listening to what they say. Because, dude, sometimes when, it, when, I, when I'm told thing. to like, let go, I'm like, what the f- are you talking about? I don't know a single person that's a high. You read stories about Kobe Bryant or whoever. The, it's like they never let go. But at the end of the day, if you really dig into their stories, they were extremely, extremely coachable. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Um, I think working as a team. What I, what I, the realization I came to too is that like, I think both of you know I have extreme trust in you guys when it comes to running a business, and it's like, mm-hmm. like you guys have shown me this whole new life that I didn't even know was a thing or possible, right? I don't think my fear in trusting you guys comes from you two. I'm pretty sure it's me. I fear that I will disappoint you two. And that there's that little disconnect. I'm thinking about the streaming thing especially. Because I was very, very hesitant in that, right? And it ultimately came to be nothing because of me. But looking back, I was like, when, when we talk about trust and leadership and all that, one, I wasn't ready to step up and like, actually be a leader and take the responsibility to do that shit, right but two it was like there was this little like this this fear of like disappointing you two the fear of failure and then in failure disappointing like you two and trusting me with it so it ultimately it just dude. within dude within that day it was like something i was excited about and then i woke up and i was like oh shit, like this is really here this is really big and I don't think I'm ready for it. Mm. But I just never had the words to say to that. To communicate it, yep. yeah. And so that's the thing, right? Like, lots of lessons learned. Mm-hmm. Being silent, it would have been better to come to us and be like, I'm really not ready for this. And we would have felt a certain way, but at least you would have expressed your heart. Yeah. And we could have, like, remedied it before it got to the point of you not saying anything. So that's that's the thing, too. It's like, it's, it's like being... Yeah, it's just a weird balance of like being able to share your heart so Dude, that my life yeah. is a weird balance right now. Yeah. But it's like But it's I've like been, you gotta keep talking. the more you talk out loud too, and I'm I'm even hearing your thought process of how you f- you know, you're fueled by ego, it's like, okay, well let's try to like guide that another yeah. way. Like I mean it's just yeah. When I when I do get like this, I tend to kind of shut myself off. Yeah. Which is what I've been doing for the past I don't like half a year almost. But but you know that like n- Regardless of like the the roller coaster of whatever emotion you're feeling, like we've always been here for you. No, you know of course. What I'm no, I'll, exactly. I'll never so, take that for granted. No, of course. And and so so then that also should allow you the idea of like, okay, let me try to break the pattern and try something different. I think with using the resources that yeah, are around me. I think me. I was quite good at that when I first met you two, and then I reverted back mm-hmm. to to trying to do 
everything myself. Something mm-hmm. I thought of while you were talking about reverting back. Something in my ayahuasca trip that actually, like, the way I perceived it was a little hazy. And then I read a f- comment. That's what I was talking about with these commenters, these, these psychologists. Comments beat me up. It, no, no, it was a good comment. Oh. So he was analyzing yeah. the, the story, the vision I saw of me as a lion and all the baby lions around me. And I don't think it was, like, accurate, accurate, but I think what he said, like, related to what I was feeling in that trip. And it was, like, the lion represents Wutak now carrying, like, lots of hurt. But, or like some no, I don't. It was like the lion. He's, it's representing him, his younger self, that was all of the things that brought him here, but can no longer carry him further. And mm-hmm. I was like incorrect of the lion analogy, but I did get like remnants of that throughout the other parts of the trip, and uh, and then when like when we're talking about like constantly reverting to our old self, mm. it's because like you you're clinging to that old self because it's all you know. Yeah. Mm, so you cling to absolutely. habits, you cling to thought patterns from your old self. When I say you're addicted to sadness, it's because you've just lived in sadness your mm. whole life. So when you don't know what to do, when you feel lost, you revert to a sad pattern. Yeah. And two, it's like, two thoughts. Yeah. Bro, uh, with that, fuck, I hope I don't forget any of this. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Oh uh, no! With the with the sadness thing was um all right. I'll, I'll go with the other thing. Uh, you, the same when you did ayahuasca and had all those visions, right? Mm-hmm. It was one time when I was like seventeen and I hit this dab pen way too much, <laughs> like way way too much, and I greened the f- out. Uh-huh. But that night I I was having visions. This was a week or two before I finally ran away, uh-huh. right? The vision was I don't know if I've ever said this online. I was on it was like a a starry night, super like full moon. I was on a hill with a spear, had like a thousand wolves around me. I just murdered all of them. And that's where I keep talking about my mindset has always been like me against the world, Mm -hmm. right? Because growing up, I didn't have So it's just, that's what my mind is cemented in. Yeah. And it's hard to accept that now I do have people and I do have friends and I do have people that can protect me. But yeah, so that vision is just like, that. that's honestly shaped who I became. And it's just, it's, that's always what I've seen. Yeah. Big facts. But so. yeah, yeah. So part of it is, is your younger self in, in a harsh way, but it is like kid giving up that in that, like you, there's no wonder you grew up thinking the world was against you where even your own dad, who was like one of two people that should be obligated to take care of you could harm you in such a way. So of course you're going to feel like the entire world is against you. But I mean, Definitely. the fact that you can even recognize it, I think it, it goes back to like literally like the first change is like stop blaming your stop taking credit and stop blaming yourself because the same part of you that takes credit blames yourself. Absolutely. So Just it's like gratitude is, it's, is it's more. The, yeah. Well, what's that saying? Is the it's the same side of a coin, two sides of a coin. Yeah. Two so. sides of the same coin. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And God exists to take both of them. So I've been I've been seeing a lot of God clips lately, and I like watch them. Mm. Not saying that I'm. Yeah, yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, I still got this tattoo in Arabic. <laughs> yeah. You have anything uh, to say? Yeah, you've been awfully quiet. I'm just listening. I I don't want to put myself in the conversation that's <laughs> with you guys. That's good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I was just listening. Now you gotta no. fight. No, 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 no. I was listening. It was a good conversation uh-huh. too. By now, you've seen us drink this beautiful drink, and this is Nectar Hard Seltzer, the first Asian-inspired hard seltzer featuring delicious flavors like Asian pear, lychee, mandarin, and yuzu. Now, unlike all those big brands out there that have that disgusting aftertaste, we got rid of it. There is no weird aftertaste in this. We actually started Nectar two years ago out of my garage, and because of a viral TikTok, we took off. And because of supporters like you, we've now expanded Nectar into five states, California, Hawaii, Washington, New York, and New Jersey. If you'd like to get a box of Nectar, here are four easy options to choose from. Go to our website, NectarHardSeltzer.com, click on the store locator, and the store closest to you will pop right up. If we're not in any stores near you, next time you're in your favorite store, ask the manager to stock us. You'll be genuinely surprised how well that works. Works. And if we're not in any stores near you yet, or we're not in your city, you can order us online. We ship to 45 states. And if we can't ship to you, send us a text that tells us where we need to go next. Drink Nectar Hard Seltzer, unique Asian flavors, and no weird aftertaste. Now back to whatever the hell they're talking about. Now, it's been a crazy, just looking back, man, it's been a crazy two years, though. Mm-hmm. And it's, I've, I've been living my life just by quotes. Like, I love quotes, and they help me a lot. And... I would say my quote for this month has been um, one day or day one, your choice. 
it's it's uh that's what's propelled me to like start streaming and and say that again one day or day one your choice so it, oh. you can sit there and you can tell yourself i want to be this one day or that one day or you can start it today oh. and today is day one tomorrow is day oh, two that's good yep so that's helped me a lot and then as i was going through that whole little imposter syndrome thing um i saw this tiktok that was like this is the first time you're this version of yourself. It's normal to feel lost. Yes. Because that was, that was what I felt, just lost. Not really anger, not really sadness, not really revenge. Just like extremely, extremely like lost. So. That was just this guy, Alex Hormozzi. He has this quote. Of God, like, I love quotes. He has this quote that it's like, if you're not feeling lost, then that means you've, you know what the f*** is going on. And that's a bad place to be in. Like, that means you're not trying to grow at all. Mm. So it's like every entrepreneur is constantly feeling lost always because like entrepreneur by definition is somebody that's like trying to build their own shit, do shit that they've never done before, innovate, right? And so like the feeling of feeling lost, which like I definitely constantly feel is from like me tr constantly trying to become better, become new, do some shit I've never done before. You said something interesting when you were also starting your gym journey. You saw some TikTok and they're like, why not start today? Because in three months... You'll have done it or something. Oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. The you time is gonna pass anyway. Yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, do you remember it? Because uh, I'm pretty sure it was that. The time is gonna pass anyways. Why so not why put not in start the now? Just, yeah. yeah, and if you look back like 90 days from now, it's like you will have gone to the gym. I also think before I even learned what the term you guys love saying delayed gratification, right? Yeah. Before I even knew the term, I think I was starting. My mind was starting to wrap my head around that. Whereas like. I used to want, like, if I, if I do this and it doesn't succeed within a month, then I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. like, I, like, I failed in my eyes. Yeah. Whereas now, I'm going to use streaming as my example because that's my new endeavor. Um, dude, I'm so ready to just, like, put my head down and no matter how bad the stream is or, well, if it's a bad stream, I can learn from it and improve, yeah, of course. right? Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm ready to put my head down and do this shit and then look up at the, at the end of this year and see where the mile mark is. And then once we hit that, then next year, let's see what we can improve on and whatever. And then it just keeps going up. Yeah. And also, it's like you got to think like there was a time where our podcast was hitting like when we first all started. It was hitting like millions of views every clip, 100,000 plus episodes on YouTube. It dove for a bit, but we just kind of like stayed steady. And now it's <laughs> it's hitting again. That's every page. Now every, that I've yeah. grown so many pages, yeah. it's the same it, this was this is an interesting thing about your imposter syndrome. This is the first year I didn't have imposter syndrome mm. in, in doing all of this. Shit. And it's in part due to like when I'm doing bar chemistry, right? And then like it takes like a dip in views. I'm like, oh, I'm a fraud. I've exhausted the meat joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, I have you to get, find a new gimmick. I'm going to start putting it in my ass. <laughs> but like, legit, like I'm sitting there like torn up, like. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get another job. Like, and back then, bro, I had just hired Eddie. I'm paying Eddie's full time salary. Not taking, I didn't take a salary. I'm paying Eddie, not even paying myself for my business because I was like, I hired him. I, I made him quit his job. I cannot not pay this man. I was doing, bro, I pivoted the business to start doing social media management so I could make money to pay Eddie and like doing crazy, shit, right? But I trucked it out for like, Two months of no views, like less sub 10,000 views on a page with 700,000 followers. Sub 10,000 views, still posting multiple times a day. And then something clicked while I was in Miami. And I had filmed this before I went to Miami. And I posted a video like, what is vodka? It was my first video of that series. Took off, 600,000 views. Then like my pace started getting, like slowly, like other videos started getting it again. And it was lit, bro. I was like on the verge of like, I need a job type shit, right? And it's like, did everything I could to just keep going, keep trucking. And it's like a lot of people in those two months would give up. I see a lot of dead pages, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, then I, then I learned that like, oh, wow, in just continuing it, not giving a fuck about the optics of what I look like of a 700,000 follower page with 10,000 views, right? I just kept doing it and it worked out. And then it happened again at like 900, at like, I forget where it happened again. I think I went straight to a million after that, like 700,000 to 800,000 in a month. And then in one video, I went from 800K to a million, one video, Damn. one day. And then after that, I'm like, I have a million followers, less than a year. Like that's a, everywhere I went, like life was different. Like I could literally, it's such a flex, right? And then I, I hit another like slump, like 1.3 or something. I did not move. And it was just, just, but that time I was more confident. I was like, I can just keep doing. 
and like the way creativity works, it's like I may be juicing my brain just not right now, but as long as I keep trying to connect to the ether and remove my ego and the pollutants in my mind, one like something will reach out and I'll grab it, right? It's very like weird creativity yep. that way. But like then I figured it out again. And then I started a new thing with you under the influence, and it was like doing it again in a whole separate medium. Now it wasn't, now I didn't have bartending to rely on. I had to be entertaining myself or be a good interviewer with the guests. And it was like, once that started taking off, I was, it gave me more confidence. Like I've done this now, I've proven myself in two things. Then I did the health videos and then I was like, I got this shit, right? Cause I was like, holy f I've- It's mastery. I've, yeah. Exactly, I put in the 10,000 hours. Like I low key have got this shit mastered. Now I can look at other people's pages and be yep, like, yep. change this, do this, blah, blah, blah. Boom, better video, right? Like, mm -hmm. and it's like, and I do that for people all the time. And it's just like, whoa. I will say this podcast has been invaluable, in invaluable to me. In that means it's not valuable. Wise. What? That means it's not valuable. In fact, I'm just fucking. I'm just fucking. Uh, I, like, <laughs> I started oh, questioning. Supposed to back me up, man. I know, I know, but I, I was also, I was like, damn, I didn't know the word. <laughs> I was like, I thought I was using it wrong this whole time. <laughs> I never nah, knew the word, so vocab, I was just like, okay. don't ever argue about vocab with me. Whoa, whoa, whoa yeah. buddy, get out of here. Documentary. I won't. Yeah. I will never. <laughs> Also, I, you I didn't, didn't know what anything. certain fruits were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fruits. That's not vocab. <laughs> vocab is words. That nah. those are words. I am good at something. I know all the fruits. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot about food and cuisine. True. Yeah, you're good at some things. I I was also thinking about this when he, uh, Vit was talking about imposter syndrome. Uh -huh. Like I grew Instagram so quick because of under the influence and all, like all this stuff, and I'm just Give like us some clout, please. You're in it. Trickle down. You're in it. <laughs> but yeah, but I was just like, damn, I don't know. What if this, what if I like, s like lose motivation just because like I grew it so fast? Fuck you motivation. Know what I mean? That's the thing. It's, yeah. it's like yeah. you, motivation is that fuel, that fuel source. Mm -hmm. So if you only ever made shit happen when you were motivated, like that's, that's what it was like. It be, That's how like, even though bar chemistry hit those dips, that it still survived and then got to the next level. Cause it wasn't, if I was super unmotivated, I hated making those videos mm. when I was getting 10,000 views. I felt like literally like a piece of shit. Like I'm a loser. Me. Nobody likes my meat jokes. Yeah, he's doing it with tears in his eyes. <laughs> also, also I didn't whip out the meat jokes till, till, till past 1.9. So Mother. yeah, I didn't, those days were not reliant on me. I'm just jokes. imagining he's like, he's slumped and he's like, what's going to take my business to the next level down the ether. It's like a muddler. It's like <laughs> me. Put it in your mouth. And he's just like, <laughs> reaches out to the ether. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> 1.9 million. Are you sure? I'll do it. Floating <laughs> <laughs> right. in like right. the universe. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Jokes aside, I didn't do. I didn't make a joke till like way, literally till I moved to LA, past LA. A joke, but I didn't. LA put it really in my changed mouth. him. LA changed me for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. 10. It was not motivation that made me keep making those videos when I was getting no views. It was discipline, and mm -hmm. because I di in discipline made videos that got no views. Eventually, from getting no views, I like figured out like these slight tweaks, and boom, and then it hit again. You, know? you ever hide your videos? Nowadays, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but back then, I did not. I let that <laughs> rock in the open. Like, look, everyone, look how much of a loser I am. Sometimes I'll look up, like, sometimes an old whatever, I'll click on a hashtag and it's an old video. I'll watch that shit, and I'm like, ew, cringe. Yeah. Immediately delete. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. even archive, delete. Oh, bro, that <laughs> makes me cringe oh, too. Oh, my goodness. Oh, but there's this saying. Success is on the other side of Cringe Mountain. Yes. You oh. got to be a little cringy. Like, content is a little bit cringy. Not mm -hmm. e cringy, yes, but think of anybody that tries to do anything cool with their of life. Of course. Everyone is good. When it's not working, it's cringy, it's, it's lame, it's blah, blah, blah. But the second it works, it's no longer cringy. I could mm. literally, I could do anything I want, and if a page with zero followers did it, people would be like, lame, weird, gay, whatever, right? But the fact that I'm doing it, I have millions of followers, what are you gonna say? To you? you can say that, but it's like... It's working. Yeah, yeah. you have mm. zero followers, zero dollars, I'm washing you, so oh. like, you know, like... I have a thought. What? Um, I, on my rant, I was like, in order to, at least for me, in order to do something, right? It was, you had to be so delusional about it. You had to believe in yourself so much that it's to the point of delusion. But what's tricky about that is then ego comes into play. Yeah. And we, we in this room hate ego. So that's- I don't hate bro, ego. Yeah, it's not, it's not a hate thing versus like a- yeah. Ego is a master, moment. but a wonderful slave. So make Ooh, it work for you bars. or work for it. And in one way or the other, it will ruin you or, it might, or, or, or it'll bring Dude, you to where you gotta you go. You guys have so many quotes. I love quotes. I, I, I love quotes, but I could never remember that one. Has, I get turned on by quotes. Well, yeah, if a quote really f 
changes your life, you remember that shit. Yeah. yeah. If if never mind. No, everything you guys are saying right now changed my life, but I, don't, I can't remember it. But you also have like a all like right a thing. I can't. You, know? I, you, you can't keep yeah. blaming it on this. You're anymore. right, but I feel like Loki can. that probably Epilepsy is why. Epilepsy is not me. Yeah. Hey, but you're the, right. You actually you're right. But, Let me stop like, saying that. Hey, hey, <laughs> what's that quote? I forgot. But, again. But, uh, <laughs> what are we arguing about? Hey, but I will say for you, you for you, for forgetting for you, like I, you said, you had imposter syndrome, or you're like, oh, what if I lose motivation? I had something yeah. to say around that. Regardless, it's like you should. You're naturally good at social media. It comes natural. Oh. Like your simplest videos get like 20 million views, right? Like that is a superpower. You're like, very okay. good at expect like TikTok. I mean, give yourself some credit, bro. Your YouTube is about to hit 100k. You just I know, started. but I. That's what I'm saying. I'm like my content. If I look at other people's content, I'm like, oh Comparison shit, like they're really joy. good. They're really good, but because they didn't come from like under the influence, right? Mm -hmm. Or like another platform that was bigger like they're gr growing very very slow but when i watch their videos i'm like damn they put so much work and so much effort and i'm Steal. over here Steal. Uh, i do yeah. be doing that but <laughs> Two things. but yeah like my mic isn't good like i my editing like sucks like i'm still working on it but like you know what i mean that don't matter none of those matter because those it is matter. literally just make your, your oh sorry oh, yeah fault. <laughs> two things one comparison is, is a thief, thief of joy, of joy. That one but I also know. two <laughs> Let him finish. Two. I'm waiting in long. Yeah, you you're, I'm about to forget this. Shit. I'm hyped up right now. Two. You just gotta reframe it in your in in your mind. Cause mm -hmm. your 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 fear is like, oh, they put out better content. They actually deserve that. All all of my growth is because of this podcast, right? Reframe it in your mind, which is like in my head, right? I was like, people have started, became big streamers, right? Starting from zero. Who am I to, to tell myself that because I have this other podcast or I already have a fan base that I'm less deserving than them or I have to work harder or whatever. It is possible to start from zero to zero, go from zero to 100, right? You just got blessed enough and lucky enough to already have some shit going for yeah. you. So also, like, also yeah. your personality got you on this podcast. Those yeah. quirky, it's like, it's, it's like, like you won have, a lottery that we were having yeah. to, and you just won it. Like yeah, and you've been showing up and it's been doing yeah. well and you've built fans and people like you. It's like, it's like, why the <laughs> are you trying to make your life harder? And even if, right, even if you got a lottery to get on the podcast, right, the fans don't follow you to your videos without like you being somebody to follow. Without you being you. Yeah. So I'm great. Exactly. Yeah. Give you've been blessed. Credit. You've Keep been blessed. Up. But also yeah. like. No, no, no. Jeremy's great. Now He's... the ego is. Oh, <laughs> hey, it's going back. You're new to that. <laughs> So it's like, if your videos aren't as good, figure out what you want to make it better. And, and, and it. eventually you're going to start making money. Like you're going to, like your personality will carry you to a certain point that you make enough money that you then pay somebody who's good at editing. Then it's, mm. you know what I'm saying? You don't need to sit there and learn editing. You're not like the kind of person that's going to turn into Eddie all of a sudden. Watch me. You nah. will not. That shit is tedious. That's, bro. It, that's for people without personality. Like, I swear to God. Like, the, like, <laughs> without let me take personality? That back. No. Eddie's gonna watch no, this no, back. no, no, no. I <laughs> no, no, no. That's crazy. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. Joe, bury this body. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> we're cutting this shit out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but listen. If you really Fuck, look at, if that's you not what I meant. If you really look at David Dobrik, like there's no fancy editing. He was just a really great personality. His skill was directing whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Your skill is you see funny moments. You know how to communicate to a camera. Yep. Like that's it. Should I be watching his videos? I have never seen one. Yeah, go watch his videos. They're so one. good. They're, you've never watched a full David Dobrik video. Nope. I, have. I haven't even I watched, watched them. all of them. Yeah. They were so good. Bro, David Dobrik was genius because. It was his personality, but it was also, like you said, him directing other people. Suddenly, you yeah. have this whole cast. It was like a reality mm. TV show. Four minutes, 20, very quick that you could just watch once a week. Four and minutes. Skits and so, no, so what happened was he was a hilarious on Vine. Did you guys not follow him on Vine? I did. He was hilarious on Vine, Vine. Yep. and he took a Vine format of and then pieced it into a longer video. So everything was like mm -hmm. funny skits in like 15 to 30 seconds, and it was just like crack. At the time, a four minute, 20 YouTube video, you're like, that's too short. It was like mm. eight, 12 minutes, right? And it, it was just short form in a, Dude, in a new genius. format. It was so good. It was so Just genius. go watch back. You'll get hooked. I it, think- It's your I next show you should watch. Imagine you, the same concept of like you scrolling your TikTok page, right? Boom, boom, boom. Literally that in one YouTube video on his channel. Yep. It was so genius. So it was bro. just random- I wish I had yep. done it. Random right. back to back? Random 
So like part of the video may be the biggest moment would be like obviously when he he also had no money back then. So people were always like, oh, he's giving away cars. That's why he's rich. No, he would just come up with funny things. So like maybe like one minute would be a prank, but then the other four minute and twenty seconds would just be random. Shit he's doing. He'd be like talking to like a funny street performer and like create a funny interaction. Then it would just randomly cut. Dude, it was like a he's, highlight reel of yes, his week. Yes, yes, he, yes. It was, highlight reel is so the best genius. way. It's so good. What was All he right. doing? Like Enough glazing David Dobrik, though. Nah. <laughs> Come on the show, David, please. He doesn't really go anywhere Yeah, anymore. I feel like he got canceled and then stopped. I heard a podcast of his buddy from home who has that protein company. It was basically Ilya? a clip, and he was like, what David's been doing now is, like, he's just, like, partying. He, like, drinks every day, goes out. Like, really? He's, yeah, he's always go hitting find him. Up. Didn't yeah. he do that? <laughs> didn't he do that? Didn't he not drink at yeah, all? Yeah, he did not drink. And now that he's just like he's just like spending money and going Ooh, out and damn. yeah, dark place. Yeah, let's, let's praying for you, David. Yeah, you may have done things to get canceled, but everyone deserves forgiveness. But at a for, at a certain place, I was also like, I don't trust a guy who doesn't drink at all. But now that he's okay, I'm like, you're normal. You're going what? through the regular. Arc. Oh, like like you're human. Yeah, you're yeah, you're, yeah, oh, you're like, human. Like a Brando, like a you're you yeah, scare yeah, me, yeah, like you, you robot. Yeah, because because like, everyone was kind of like this guy doesn't drink and puts his friends in all those situations. But I'm like, I don't think it was that. And then he now that feel he, malicious, it's like guy was getting famous because he's really good at making videos. You're yep. gonna keep making the videos. You're he gonna was keep funny. Him up. His vines were hilarious too. And his friends got lots of clout. Lots of money from being in those videos, and they all burnt, blew it. Yeah. A lot of them just blew it. A lot that, of them are still fine. That does like, sound weird. A guy that doesn't drink making his friends yeah, when get they, drunk and like it is, sounds is, weird is on paper, but like but it's not weird, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the guy. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking weirdo. though? Like if no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. That's how people tried to paint uh, him, and I was like, huh. And then I was like, uh, you know, I he's see just why they guy. thought that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when you watch his videos, you're like this. Also, his his manager's wife was the first person that I ever gave me a shot in the music industry. Mm. And like, you know, she would, she's like, he's just a normal, he's a good dude at the end mm. of the day. He's, he's like, goofy. Yeah, he's just a goofy goober. Goofy little goober. And it's goober. like, dude, if you think about it, young kid making millions of dollars, like we would have all done, done, like Absolutely. all the that he was getting, I was like, I would have put someone on a crane and spun him around. Oh, I would have spun and, that crane OD. And took that joke way too far. Yeah, yeah, I would have like been Like if I saw Wu Talk on the, the end of it, like. <laughs> and you wonder why. Guy. You wonder why. Can't, I, I don't know how to reword this question. Um, what? You know how like people get canceled? She's like, I hate Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> why do Chinese people exist? <laughs> <laughs> why, does, why does he do Actually, this? Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was going to say, like, the how audio bad? listeners, she does not mean it. She takes it back. Oh, my. I never said that. <laughs> I, okay. How bad of a thing must someone do to not be able to come out of being canceled, like, mm. and, 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 and what did Rappe. David Dobrik do that like he's canceled? Injured his friend, yeah, and then he also his his circle did bad things, and so they're like, "Oh, David, you're the leader. You should have been responsible." But it was a bunch of yeah, young it was kids not with as, money. It was not as bad as most cancelings I've heard. But I think it was he's like, so big that like yeah, people it was are all adjacent him. to him, and the mob just loves to tear people yeah. down. You know, what I'm saying once you like, get to a certain point, people will start to tear you down. Yeah, because I'm thinking, I'm like, there's so many people that got canceled, and I'm just like. What did they do? Hey, and you're it's not like, pop until you got hey, haters. Yeah, like P. Diddy, like legit is like a movie super villain. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. He didn't lose anything really. Like, And he's still up and like doing whatever he wants yeah, he without anybody he attacking him. Perfect transition. As a man, you can't. Oh, win on the internet? Yeah, say it all in one. So as a man, I've noticed that as a man on the internet, you just there's just no way you can win. I feel like I'd be winning sometimes. Nah, oh. not against oh. the comments. Not against like, not against like hate mob. Like if they yeah. really want to have to come after you. I yeah. mean, I guess that's anybody. That's anyone. But yeah. I think, but I think, um, yeah, I guess it's the divisive nature. It's like mm -hmm. political affiliation, whatever it is. Gender, like they, they find a minute. Yeah, they find a crack in the armor, and then they just want to tear you. you down and make sure you can never exist. And uh, yeah, the internet feeds off dirty fuel. Like yeah. it feeds off hate. Absolutely. Like that is way more entertaining and and. It makes you feel like if someone's doing better than you and then they fall, you're kind of like, the internet loves to eat yeah. that shit up. What's the most infuriating thing that someone has told you that you wanted to fight them? It, for me, that it's, I look it's like too... Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, that comment. Who, whoever came up with that comment, say sorry. Yeah, for real. But no, for me, it's, um, I get a lot of comments that are like, <laughs> if I try to talk about the shit I've been through or like, if I try to talk about going to jail or whatever, one half of it is, this guy's trying to act hard. He's trying to 
blah, 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 right? And then the other half is like, whenever I try to do good or whenever I talk about K-pop stands, they're like, well, you have a criminal record. So it's like, <laughs> either well, I'm not about it or I, I am about it. You guys look down on me for both ways. So which one do you yeah. want? That's why you got to yeah. ignore it ultimately. I know, but and it's that, only that so a, much I can ignore. Yeah, they that, say that things was, when it's convenient for them. Absolutely. Just win like an argument. That was such a good perspective about the good comments. Yeah. Like I never thought about that of like, oh, the yeah, good comments are also. Here's another perspective. We paint the comments as they, right? But in reality, it's... It to us seems as a collective mm -hmm. could be she is, her. Yeah, mm, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, bad joke. So bad. But like, what I'm saying is, is that like the same person that's like all this guy does is talk about going to jail is not the same person that's like in the career boot comments being like this guy yeah. has a criminal record. So like to it's us, true. it's like you're flipping on your stance, and people do that in the comments too. Like it'll be like us saying something about like oh people that are delusional about any stand culture, right? And then they're like. Oh, but but sports fans are okay, right? I'm like, I never once said oh, sports yeah. fans are okay. You're taking some but somebody else that says uh, the same thing while yeah. being a delusional sports fan and then applying it to me because you are also doing this whole collective thing. Yeah, so I'm I'll, much more nuanced than that. I think sports fans are delusional too. You got another grown man's in your mouth take it out of there i mean they be physically fighting <laughs> yeah exactly they're they're they can get violent and crazy and it's any type of delusional fandom worshiping human beings type that is but crazy. it depends y'all you guys can like whoever just don't be hurting people yeah it's like, yeah, exactly i've said it so many times i do not care if you listen to k-pop that's cool do your thing i do not give a f yep. the same way this is a good, perfect example there was a there was a match last year where like some super uber fans they call them extras of a of a soccer team like started a whole stampede and it got like 20 people injured i would also talk about them yep. my talking shit does not only apply to one community i could talk to many communities yep. <laughs> and also the delusion rears itself in different ways like a group of men that are drunk over sports yeah. is going to riot and be destructive and that's stupid and delusional and then the way that these like k-pop fans are delusional is like sending death threats to the to the people that their favorite idol is rumored to date like that's Literally. those are both equally as maybe not equally destructive in their own branches of destruction and yep. it's weird and it shows character regardless so yeah. i don't give a if fuck you either. like something yeah. i think that's pretty cool to have something you like that much and be an expert at it's cool i think it's very cool yeah be it's an expert yeah. is something useful how is k-pop making you money hey, that's right. to hey, work you know what liking k-pop i i totally i think it's make, cool. i like k-pop songs make, make super bonsai affiliate tiktok videos yeah. jesus you get the energy you make edits of this guy <laughs> and sell super recovery I mean, that's if you dude, imagine if you got k-pop stands on your side to just yeah, you know what you write it. guys by the way i don't yeah. know if i've ever shown you my playlist and here's the thing i actually not even trying to pander right now i'd listen to lots of k-pop songs that's fine it's it's a yeah. good there's plenty of good songs and, and plenty of great artists to follow. Oh. The weird sh is when you take it that far. You are the equivalent of sports fans getting in the street and breaking random people's cards and setting it on fire when you start to like delusionally believe that your ugly ass is going to one day date this multi-millionaire hey. star. I support. No, hey, nothing. None. I support. No. Okay, I listen to Haru Haru all the time. Yeah, but you know what I realized? People watch our podcast and they feel <laughs> comfort, right? Mm -hmm. So they're just like, I love you guys, right? And they come to all the events and stuff. You know, obviously we're grateful. Same thing with like them listening to K-pop songs. But they're not, they're our fans are not delusional. And if there are delusional ones, it's the ones that will kiss him on the neck or yeah. grab my in public. It's like, that's delusional yeah, 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 as well. Yeah. Why do you think that's yeah, yeah. okay? Yeah, it's, no, no, it's not okay. But yeah, I'm just no like, problem, oh, I, I was just putting out. into perspective. I was like, oh, I see. Like, yeah. it's okay to like something a yeah. lot. Just don't be doing don't stuff yeah don't basically like commit that. crimes over it yeah. is is the basis. Just for the clip, give a Jungkook. Cook, John Cook, Big Bang, <laughs> oh Big Bang. I love Big Bang. Big Bang was. I like I'm listening to Blue. Blue is really good. Oh, who's that? Blue is a uh, Big name Bang of the song? song. Oh, yeah. I love uh, Taeyang. Taeyang. Wedding dress oh, was you a know, dress. I also He's know the that. only one that didn't have a scandal. Yeah, apparently. What, did, what was G Dragon scandal? Tries Maybe. to be uh, blue. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's Jay Park. <laughs> but uh, G, G Dragon, G Dragon also had bangers. No, yeah, T.O.P. was my favorite. T.O.P. So has d some allegations, right? Yeah, yeah. Was his? I think it's also. I think it's also. It's always. And I think he tried to drugs. commit. That's why I'm like looking like, 
That what, makes you cooler. The, the one, the one dime of weed that's on the street to Korea. They, in, they, they, yeah, in America, this would this would be nothing. But in Korea, they make the biggest deal. That's why I'm like, literally, American rappers are like, yeah, I killed that motherfucker, and I spin the block and killed his mom, <laughs> and then here's the evidence that I really did it. And it's just like, oh, I love King Von or whoever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. And then, but in in Korea, it's like, oh, he smoked weed. No, he smelled weed. Headlines. <laughs> like, you know, like, it was also back in like the early 2000s though, too, right? No, no, it's still like that. Still? Yes, yeah, still. Damn, Korea, you suck. That's why Koreans go to college at a high rate, because <laughs> they're really, really illegal. Korea, number, number one. one. Why do you think we're number one? <laughs> no yeah, None of you. Literally just no guns, your brains yeah. out for going. Tattoos are illegal in Korea. Yep. I know. Yeah. You're just oh, a dude, him. You're just a walking crime. Hold, how would I even go to Korea with him? No, you we, can go to no. There's yeah, you can have tattoos. There's I've seen guys in Korea tatted. No, I've seen super. T oh, I guess no. You can't appear on any media. That's yeah. what it is. Like Jungkook when he performs, he has a sleeve. He wears mm -hmm. like a. Is that a thing? I didn't yeah. know that. It's like it's not. Le they're not gonna snatch you up out the street yeah, for being yeah. tatted, but like you can't appear in a <laughs> yeah. lot of things. You're wa you're walking with Vid. All of a sudden, someone pulls Vid to the side. No. You're like, what? No, that, that would happen to me because they gotta be. They're like they're gonna find me and take me to the military. Terry, so oh. that's why I can't <laughs> is yeah. that, that's funny that's yeah. that, yeah, it just would be me it would be him looking around like what happened to all you gotta do is like wear like a body cast so they don't you know they pretend that you're injured how can I fake asthma <laughs> don't take me <laughs> I would be useless I don't even like guns like we don't understand get it you're speaking English <laughs> What do uh so what would you say that people misunderstand about you the most? That I'm perfect, but I'm not. <laughs> that I'm only human. Stop the singing thing you got going on, man. The f way to rain on my parade. I'll yeah. sing if I want to. It needed to be rained on. The parade was looking way too happy. All right, episode's over. We got rid of Utak. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for allowing me. Unplug to your mic and leave it here. That's us. Wait, we should ask the audience like who they would want to see replace Wu Talk. Damn. Not a replacement. Yeah, I, I, guess. Said, I said I was coming what? back. Wu Talk is coming back. This is not like yes, last yes, time. Yes. One day, one day, yeah. if Jeremy changes Think his <laughs> tune. <laughs> Think of me. this as a uh, much needed mental break, not as a totally. This shit's about to go up in flames, and I don't know what to do with my life anymore. Yeah. I, ho I hope it's not. No, <laughs> but in the we meantime, love this podcast. in the meantime, suggest guests, yes. past ones we that do, you love, would like to new ones. On. Who else? You know, and this could also be an opportunity where we also find that everyone in the comments is like, "No fifth co-host, we're not listening to you. You Trust don't know me. what's good for you. We're like your parents <laughs> telling you to eat vegetables, and you're refusing. We're gonna force these vegetables down your throat because it's good for you." Oh, and, by the and way, we wouldn't add. A, we wouldn't force a fifth co-host, right? Like no. it, we, they need to vibe. You know? Yeah, it's the we need to find the perfect one, and then it would just blow this up even Definitely. more. Definitely, you guys yes. would enjoy us more. Maybe these two would stop talking so much, <laughs> or they. It, it, we are looking for a <laughs> woman, so that maybe they'll just interrupt them. Just right, as man, much. if it was you, if it was you, the one talking a lot, I'd be like, guys, do you like my hair? <laughs> no, guys, how does my hair look today? Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. I would be talking about mental health. Hey, hey you know what? Well, let's put him on it where he just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually want to see that happen. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. see. You, let's you, see. You run the episodes. I would gladly just let you talk. Okay. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Right now is wait. Esther was gonna say yes. something. We yes. got sidetracked. Oh. Um, Guests. Oh, I was. I was gonna say, uh, you have to recommend someone that talks a lot. Okay, there are people that on social media kind of mm. they talk, but it's like not. How do you say? You want people that would like fit well in this environment yeah. where mm -hmm. they have they're opinionated, they're funny, mm -hmm. they aren't too uptight. Yeah. You know, they, they, they can, can handle they this. They can fight. They can or, box. Open, or, open too. Or they got bars. Like they're gonna just come spit some knowledge. Like they're highly yeah. intelligent. We want that. We do want someone younger though. So the no, bars. I'm talking thing. about the guests. The guests. Oh, the yes. guests. Oh, okay. For to to you know While to you're take away. your spot. It, this is a how do you, how do you, how do they say it? A big shoe to fill. Yeah, that's a compliment. Oh. I is got that, big that, shoes. Yeah, it means, it means that they have figuratively, to. Figuratively, figuratively. And you know what they say about big shoes? What? Big shmee. Oh. But now we know that, that it's not the saying's not true. Yeah, apparently. I was the case study that yeah, proved yeah, that yeah. shit not true. The outlier. <laughs> <laughs> they need no, to be just as entertaining. Okay. I was, uh, I forgot. I'm trying to remember who, who was uh, uh, talking about how they got with a, a guy who was really tall and was small. Oh. And it was like a disappointment. Was it so hard? It was me. <laughs> 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 it's 
That sounds like a Sahar story for some reason. Sahar is a good example of a good Sahar guest. Yes, if Sahar yeah. lived here, she would be number one. Let's choice. see if oh, Sahar. I let's see her. if so, and we should clip this to see if she sees the clip. <laughs> Sahar, come come Sahar, on the come show. Replace me, Please. Sahar. Sahar, no. Which, Sahar could be the fifth fifth host if she lived in LA. She's not moving to LA. She's too Asian. Plus, bro, she's out in Toronto. Right Doing now. what she, to the just, audience of the population of ten? She just hosted the Toronto's Raptors big. live stream. Oh. Like she's doing Toronto shit. is uh, Wait, is she like doing Houston size. No, the Raptors literally had Sahar host there on the Raptors. What does channel. she know about basketball? She's probably Whoa. like the Sw Taylor Swift would love the logo. Why are you hating on my wife? Yeah, <laughs> she's Stop. got a man. No, you know why? Because they, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. just when? Oh, wait. Wait, we don't know. Cut, she cut, put cut, him cut. in the videos, Mr. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, true. cool. Yeah. I thought it was a close friends. What the? F yeah. Yeah, now you gotta now you gotta go beat him up. Yeah, what does she know about the Raptors? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, Sahar, name ten quarterbacks in the in the NBA. I don't even know what a quarterback nah, means. No, we miss yeah. you though, Sahar. I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Sahar is number one, but sadly she is in Canada. Yeah, if we put but the yeah, energy out there, we need somebody. I would also say like. Like Andy and Michelle is a great guest. We're gonna have them back. Mm -hmm. For that, you should make Vit sit in the middle and like I was judge like a cute couple contest. That's the only thing. Ah. We yeah. Do. yeah. Too many, too many goddamn relationships going Whoa. on. Whoa. I don't like that word. Jeremy and I, Jeremy and I, we have a dance together. Does Andy and Michelle? Huh? Jeremy, Jeremy. Stand up and, and I, do your dance routine. No, no, no we no, can't. No, no. <laughs> we can't, we can't hey, do but listen. Uh, in terms of finding a fifth host, we also want another woman. Because we a woman, too we tend men. to overpower her sometimes. Too many men. We're just too strong, too alpha, <laughs> beta, woman. Oh my god! Beat his ass. I can't do it in front of that. Oh, you're right. Don't worry, guys. He's gonna get what's coming to him. <laughs> I tally up his points, and then by the time it every time we five, see them, it's Jeremy groveling for the <laughs> please, <laughs> please. <laughs> Sorry. And then I mean, the yeah, cameras guys, turn on and Jeremy's like, the three C's. <laughs> <laughs> you guys saw what happened. You want to tell them what you, what you were doing before the cameras yeah, Can we know off? what the f*** was happening there? Oh, the funny story. The the letters. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, okay. Don't, do, if, if he tells you this, you can't judge me, okay? okay. I, I have a okay, reason okay. why. So she, I don't what did I you do to you? You came in today. What did you say? Okay, she I was had, looking at my box. three cards. I was looking at my box full full of like letters and stuff. And then... There was two letters that I thought were written by him. And, and there like, was one that was written by me. Yeah. And so then, she brings and then, in three in a month. And I was, like, I was like, how come you never sign your name on here? And it wasn't, it wasn't his. No, no. So she brought in three cards, three handwritten letters from guys in her past. She oh. thought they were all written by me. She's like, oh, look at these letters that you wrote me. And I open them and they're lame as <laughs> Handwriting ain't mine. I forgot what it said. It's like... To many more like future dinners, like to our future of being rich one day. I'm like, I would never. And it was like, love. <laughs> that shit what, was, is what was the nickname? And I was like, you have never called me this nickname. And she was like, yeah. Yeah, I have. And then. You confused. She confused. An ex's nickname. She confused, she confused the ex's Wait, nickname. Where did these letters come from? What? In her no. box. She saved them thinking. Oh, you saved she letters saved, from um, your ex. I, I'm very, I, I'm very like sentiment. Sentimental. Why so do I you want that have sentiment? Like, no, I was. I threw it away as soon as I found out it wasn't written by him. Dude, I prayed. I, I prayed to God. She was first like, and "That's your handwriting," and I was looking it at. Looked, it looks so similar. She had, she had one note for me that was handwritten off. A, I cut it out of a notebook. It, like these I should have known he's not were, that romantic. These were nice cards, and I had cut mine out on like a, a out journal, of a paper. journal paper. And mine was obviously the words is what mattered. Mine was the most fire note. The words were corny in the, in the letters. I was like, how could you think this was me? <laughs> He's like, did Eddie write this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was funny because they were two the two letters were two different people and then mine, and she wow. thought it was me. That's crazy. Just what can up I the say? Letters. Riz. <laughs> <laughs> Esther says Riz like a like a like a boomer trying to be cool. No, I was what trying to be like Jeremy. Jeremy does that all the time. He's that's how he talks. <sighs> well, wait, that hey, doesn't explain why you were like. Oh, why, she's mad you because of the car thing. 
Oh, I no, got today. mad at her, then she got mad at me, and then okay, I... yeah. You want you want to say it or no? <laughs> no, it doesn't no, matter. Yeah, it's doesn't not. Matter. It's not that good of a story. No, he uh, was being sassy, so I was just like, she got mad like, at me hey, for yo, sticking like, up for myself. I would be mad too. I would be sassy too. About what? You don't even <laughs> know. That hurts my feelings. <laughs> that you yeah. thought that you thought that that one. You kept letters from your exes. Oh no, 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 no two separate incidents. Two separate incidents. Two separate. The other incident was like me carrying shit out of a car, and I was heavy, and she didn't open the door, and so I was sassy with her. No, she okay, was, no, no, and I only went sassy because she was like, "Jeremy, hurry up!" I didn't say I her. Like, I didn't say. I was calling you so you could open yeah, the door so I could hold the door for him. Uh -huh. no, no, but he was on, upset. Hold. He he was upset that I didn't open the door for him so he could take out the boxes of nectar and then close the door for him. I'm holding three boxes, three lock the door of for him, and then open the. But the but, thing but is, I rushed to your door so I could call you. No, nah, no, nah, she walked out I and walked not, slow, and then she goes, "Because you were Jeremy, the door." I'm like. No, you don't I see didn't. me carrying three boxes trying help? to get car keys out my butt. And then, and I miss her. Whatever, I heard something. He misunderstood and, I was like, and he got sassy hey, on Hey, I thought own. you guys didn't want to talk about relationship problems. Yeah, true. <laughs> but, I said, but I we said. We got it anyway. Hey, we might said, as well use it. But I said, Sawi. Yeah, he did. Sawi. I've never nah, seen you, a sassier man than this. Other you than you like, talking, mommy, Jeremy. Mommy, mommy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mommy, please. Anyways. Funny. Um, another topic here. Wait, wait. How long have we been filming? Two fourteen. Yeah. Oh, let's just cut it. Let's cut it. Except let me. Oh, I'm this really part. good at guessing. For Looking at Drake's girl. If you are a girl and you are searching for Drake's, you are and you have a, a significant other, you are cheating. That is cheating. Oh. If you don't oh. like your man's, if you oh. don't like your man's, if you don't like your man's liking other girls' Instagram posts. Or Insta oh, OnlyFans models, oh. and then you're looking for another man schlong, a really big one, at and that. then you're sharing it with all your friends and be like, "Oh my god, it was flaccid and it was still big. That's oh, crazy." It's like swinging around like a garden hose. That's what? cheating. I cheated. But you, you made me cheat. Oh my god, don't. Oh, thank you for watching. Under the influence. Thank you. Thank you for all the love and all the hate that you've shown me in these past years. <laughs> Wu Talk's not leaving, okay? Don't get all sad. Just yeah. a break. I might. You might never see me again. What's that oh corny yearbook quote? Don't, don't smile because it happened. Smile because it happened. No, no, don't, cr <laughs> don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. <laughs> that one. Aww. I tried to get on the quote train. You always, you always butcher it so si slightly. That's you. <laughs> and you. She quoted you right all there. All right, bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey guys, we're under the influence and if you're enjoying our clips and you want to see the full episodes You can go to our website. We have them all linked to every audio streaming platform and YouTube If you like comment and subscribe over there, it really helps us out Please, we haven't paid the rent in months. If you're looking for us or any of the guests, we always tag them. Also, if you have any topics or questions you want to ask us, go to our website or text this number on the screen. If you're feeling thirsty, drink Nectar, Nectar Hard, Hard Seltzer. Seltzer. Delicious Asian flavors and no weird aftertaste. We ship to 45 states. Use code UTI15 at checkout on our website for 15% off your first box. And if you want some of the best bartending tools money can buy, you can use the same code UTI15 on barchemistry.com for 15% off. Thank you guys for your support. We really appreciate it. And if you leave mean comments, please stop. They really hurt our feelings. But if you don't, we love you. Uh,